guys and girls, and welcome to episode 134 of the F Reality Podcast. This is a weekly VR, AR, and MR talk show, live streamed every Saturday on YouTube and on Twitch. And don't forget, you can also catch the show live in VR using big screen TV. The show goes live at 7 p.m. in Europe, 6 p.m. in the UK, and 12 midday in Central US. You can also check out the audio version, which is available on iTunes, SoundCloud, and on Spotify. And if you have any questions, comments, or feedback during the show, please put them in the chat. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can. Now, of course, it's time for me to introduce you to the team. First up, you should call this guy Goose, as he makes an excellent wingman in virtual reality. It's my Frisian friend, Snaithy. How are you doing? Yeah, doing fine, dude. This has been a uh, fantastic week for VR. Yeah. It's it been has. amazing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it is. We have been waiting for this for a while, you know, after all these these episodes and the podcast of us, you know, first joking about Half-Life, you know, confirmed things like mm-hmm. that. And now, you know, we actually played it. It's still weird, but uh, it's it's, yeah. uh, it's awesome. I feel like, in a way, we kind of overdosed on it this week as well. Like, you know, <laughs> oh, that's, we, we, that's an understatement. <laughs> if there's one person who overdosed on VR, it has to be you, Mike. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We did some crazy things this week that I never thought would be possible. Uh, but we'll talk about that later on. But you know who I was referring to as Goose? You know that? You know, you know that's a Top Gun uh sort of a quote there you, you, you ever seen the movie top gun i have seen it but i oh, uh, i can't i can't remember the goose uh, stuff oh, okay. sorry okay so, so <laughs> that, is, is, that explains my poker face yeah yeah i thought so yeah. so goose is is maverick's wingman so that's why i called you goose there we go <sighs> there you go uh so next up this guy has been studying head crabs this week and has come to the conclusion that they don't want to do us any harm. They just want to give us a nice, lovely head massage. <laughs> it's, the, it's the one and only Rowdy VR. How you doing, dude? You all right? Uh, I'm doing all right. I, I upgraded my, my uh, shed to a, a new barn, as you can see. I, I got a new layout again. Mm. Uh, a little bit of a, a, a better one, I would say. I don't have a, a wooden wall behind me anymore, but it's a brick wall now. Uh. So. I would say that that's kind of cool, right? It, it reminds me a bit of one of those IKEA showrooms. Well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think everything you see comes from IKEA. I think Except it looks really wall. nice. Yeah, it, it it's does. My, it's actually when I when I used to because I'm I'm still at my parents' place. When I used to live here, this used to be my rehearsal room. So I had like the band coming over every week, and we would rehearse in this in this specific room uh, to my my parents' uh, aggravation. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something that people may not know actually about you, Rowdy, is that you uh, you were like a frontman for a band. Yeah, several bands actually. I've I've, yeah. I've done my fair share in music for 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 quite a while actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of fun. I love music. I uh, still do. Only uh, my new passion is virtual reality, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. Um, so sadly, as you probably know, uh, Zim uh, can't join us this week. Uh, he's working incredibly hard uh, throughout this difficult time. So hats off to the guy uh, working his socks off. Hopefully he'll get a break and he'll be back on the show next week. But we'll obviously keep you updated. Uh, so if you're listening, Zim, you know, hope you're staying well and uh, hope to have you back on the show soon, dude. Uh, last but by no means least, myself, the host of the show, Mike from Virtual Reality Oasis. We've got an interesting show for you today. Uh, some of the highlights include a new headset coming from HP in collaboration with Microsoft and Valve. Some pretty interesting news there. Uh, sad news that the Gear VR will no longer be supported from the 1st of April. So if you've got a Gear VR, uh, prepare yourself because uh, the, the server's about to get shut down. Rowdy's going to give you the lowdown on the latest releases to look forward to next week. And finally, our main event and topic of today will be about how people have found a way to play Half-Life Alex uh, without a VR headset, and also our breakdown review of the game. Uh, the coverage up until the very, very end of the show will be spoiler-free, and we'll give you plenty of warnings and notices uh, to sort of log off before we talk about the ending or any potential spoilers. So don't mm-hmm. worry, you can stick around for the rest of the show, no problem at all. But first, let's find out what everyone's been up to, the highlight of the week this week, and let's pass it to Rowdy first. And let's find out if you played anything other than Half-Life Alex. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> well, I mean, I, I have I have to say, like, again, like, the only thing I played in VR this week is, of course, Half-Life. Uh, it, I, you have to soak this one in, I think. Don't do a mic. Don't go through it <laughs> one day and then go through it the next day again. I, I think you need to, like, soak this one in a little bit. Mm. Uh, but the other game that I played, again, because of Mike and, and simply Chris as well, is Animal Crossing. Oh. I, I got into it. Um, so that is the one that I've uh, been doing uh, 
sporadically in between taking breaks from virtual reality, which you should do, Mike. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> you totally should. Yeah, that's good advice. I, I think that has been, uh, I have to say, like, I didn't know what it was about before mm. I got into it, but hearing you talk about it, and of course, Zim has been very uh, enthusiastic about it <laughs> as well. Uh, I, I, I give it a try, and I have to say, I... I kind of like it. Yeah. yeah, it's very different. It's it's very it's very chill, and I think that's why I like it so much. Because like at the moment, I'm I'm like sort of working throughout the day, um, and then in the evenings I play it, and it just kind of sends me to sleep because it's so relaxing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I just and do nice do my little tasks. We we can't go out in the real world right now. We all need to <laughs> so stay at home, but we yeah. can still go out in there. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just do that. you know what because, I like, you know what I like so much about about that game is that. Um, People have been uh, creating their own art, and the art you create can be put on shirts and, and mm. hoodies and stuff. So someone made, for example, like the Beat Saber merchandise, and you can just get it from that person for free and just yeah. share it because it's a multiplayer. So if you want to, you know, hang out with friends, then you can just, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing, like, because you said, you know, we're all stuck inside now. You know, of course, in, in real life, I'd be out there collecting sticks, fishing every day, <laughs> you know, building houses uh, for, for the local town residents. <laughs> but no, it's, it's very cool. And it's kind of really, you know, I think it, for kids, it's kind of good that you have to pay back a debt, you know, so they have to understand about managing their money and stuff. So I think for kids, it's kind of like a good educational way to understand <laughs> debt and money. And, you know, sometimes life is hard. Except, except you can't pay your debt back if you just sell like collect a hundred <laughs> shells and, and sell them to like uh, some random guy in a shop uh, he's yeah. not going to give you your mortgage back uh, that's true that's true so so, yeah. so what is that that vr version of animal crossing uh, called again there is this one game uh, on the Oculus. Well, that was what i wanted to ask like why why don't we have something like well this there is uh, but i i forget yeah. the name it's on oculus it's an exclusive too uh, it's on yeah. quest and it's on uh what is the name? Guys, please help us out. What is it? Oh, I can't it's, remember. It's so no. stupid. It's so stupid that I... It, didn't you make a video about this, Nathan? I did make, I did make a video about this. And didn't you name it like Animal Crossing in VR or something? I did, so I could look it up, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, but the, but yeah. the thing is, like, um, I think a game like that would like work very well in VR just because it's so relaxing and so slow-paced and so... Yeah. Because I have a lot of, like... If, if you look at like the titles that came out like in the, the past week, uh, you have like Doom Eternal, like very fast, like PC gaming kind of shooter. Mm. But if you then, even if you look at Half-Life, it's a much slower kind of title. And I think that that kind of genre yeah. works very well in VR because if, if it's all too much input, yeah. then you could get motion sick or it's too much information. Yeah. So I think titles like that would actually work very well in VR. So, so I'd love uh, to see a, a title like that in virtual reality. The name was uh, Raccoon Lagoon. Uh, yes. Ah, yes. It's uh, yeah. It's it's one again. It's one of those almost like forgotten titles by now because it came out so fast, and then it was like, oh, here's a new game, go play, bye. And then <laughs> weeks later, it's like, oh, did you hear about that Animal Crossing game? It's like, oh yeah, what was the name again? What? Yeah, it's getting a little rusty. So I just flipped myself in in the video because people were complaining in the chat that I have my back to you guys. So oh. is that better now? Uh, <laughs> I uh, I don't know. You look you look fine to me. Okay, uh, you have been I, inverted I, mic to, for for me for for like years now, okay. so I'm used okay. to seeing you. When I meet you in real, it's like, wait, but isn't your ha head shape different? But it's oh wait, it's the angle. Yeah, I, yeah. I think yeah. I think you're now actually sitting with the back. Yeah, that's what I thought too, but maybe oh, okay. I'm crazy. I, I can switch it back. I can switch. Like, it what back. are you it's doing, just, Mike? Uh, <laughs> I'm just I'm just playing around. Well, I, I don't I don't think it works uh, in in the Zoom. I think you need to do it with your webcam because I think you're only switching for yourself. <laughs> oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, like Raccoon Lagoon, like it was very similar because you could build up your museum and stuff like that, just like you can in Animal Crossing. Yeah, ah, that's why. Super, super chill game. And, and it was multiplayer too, but I, I think you you couldn't really share things. You could help someone out in that world, mm. but you couldn't really share. A, but that was a, a, a great start of something bigger because Animal Crossing uh, um, first person uh, could be could be super nice in VR. Um, of course, with Nintendo Labo and those cardboard controllers, I don't think we're going to get any any closer, but um, it could work. You know, again, this is a franchise that, that Nintendo owns that could definitely, definitely change the way 
uh, of how, what you want to do in VR. I think this could be so addicting in VR where it's like, oh, Mike, 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 come, 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 because let's go fishing and, oh, let's let's cut down these trees because, you know, uh, I have to do this and that. It's, just, it's amazing. I, I love that yeah. stuff. Yeah. We, yeah. we actually had a great comment uh, from a zombie snack. He says, Mike looks like he is driving the F-Reality bus. <laughs> Exactly. All aboard. <laughs> 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 All aboard. <laughs> yeah. This is the, this is the VR hype bus. <laughs> We're on this, uh, what is that bus it called again from back in the days? The magic school bus? The magic school bus. <laughs> <laughs> right into the metaverse. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's funny actually because uh, Rowdy mentioned uh, Doom Eternal. And uh, it's one of those games I bought this week. Um, and after playing Half-Life Alex, I went to play that game. And I was just like, what the heck is this game? Like, <laughs> like I, I couldn't enjoy it anymore. And so, like, Half-Life has kind of broken every other game for me right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I also played some other VR games that I can't talk about yet, but they were also ruined for me as well. And I'm like, oh. So this is brilliant. So basically, we've, we've hit the bar. There's going to be a very long time before any other game hits that bar again. And yeah. I'm just going to think every other game is trash in between that time. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if, you, if you see a grumpy mic for the next year then you know what <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's what i said like after playing half-life alex it's like it's hard to go back to to certain vr titles uh, it, i already had it kind of with bone works i was already like yeah. ah why can i not grab everything or why can i not do like everything physical and 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 now with this game it's like yeah it totally set the bar in my brain and there's no way back anymore where you know where first people's like oh these games from 2016 yeah they're classic you should play them oh this is amazing where now it's like yeah, but if you look at half life, then uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean. So it's yeah, it's I, like I totally agree. It, it's like these games can't hold up anymore. And and mm. and 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 this this as I said, this was a, a historical moment for VR because we first had Beat Saber sitting on the throne. Of course, it still sits there uh, uh, in a way in terms of sales and and but now next to that throne is another throne and that's half life alex so i feel like we yeah. now have two titles that are in this list you know but the uh, numbers the numbers of half life alex were were amazing i, I tweeted mm -hmm. about it. you guys probably saw it as well mm -hmm. yeah but they had a, a, a concurrent peak of forty three thousand players yeah yeah true. That's, that's that's insane i <laughs> i think doom eternal which is uh, one of the most anticipated pc games had like what seventy eight thousand or eighty thousand. And that's a PC game, like yeah, yeah. For, for a, a peak of forty three thousand is even good for a regular yeah. PC game. Yeah, yeah. like it's, it's getting mind blowing. Getting so many, so many people, people you know, into VR and onto Steam VR using your platform at that moment for your game that is an exclusive is like you know uh, a yeah. big bingo. But yeah, since we're gonna talk a lot about Half Life, uh, let me just talk about something else as well. Since sure. we're we're in the pancake realm, anyways, then <sighs> let's just keep keep going with it. You know, let's just deal with it. So, sure. uh, so Mike told me that you know this Resident Evil Three demo was out, uh, mm. and I did download it, but then with Half Life, I totally forgot about the fact that I even had it on my PC. Um, so uh, I think it was yesterday that I tried it, um, and um, yeah, so. You know, Resident Evil, again, it's one of those games that is so ancient that when I, you know, started playing it, uh, it, you know, for me, like, my first experience with Resident Evil was on my handheld, on my Nintendo DS, because they parted it. Uh, I didn't even know it was on the DS. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's how I played a lot of the, you know, the classics. Um, yeah. So... So I I, uh, I played the demo and first of all it looks gorgeous you know the mm. the, the mocap and everything together is like amazing um, and um, yeah I was instantly hooked again you know I love uh, third person titles I love to just you know uh, uh, find loot and and craft stuff and again as Rowdy said you know it's nice to be playing games that are not just about combat but are also about puzzling are about you know the elements of um, uh, crafting and things like that and needing to save ammo because otherwise you would die. But yeah, it was amazing to be in uh, Raccoon City and be finally more outside and see things that you are super curious about. Like there was this toy store, I just wanted to instantly go inside. And I was just <laughs> looking through the window like, wow, wow, what can I do there? So yeah, um, yeah a great, great uh, uh, title. So if you're you know uh, uh, wanting to have a break from VR, uh, mm. the demo is free on Steam, as far as I know. Um, yep. uh, it's quite demanding, I would say. Uh, that's that's the feeling I had. Um, but yeah, it's like old school meets new school and the remaster looks 
freaking fantastic it's gorgeous and yeah the zombies look terrifying so what else do you want <laughs> what did you think of uh, the nemesis the big, oh. the big the big dude yeah so the uh, yeah okay so the that that was a problem actually um, okay. so so i was just you know i found this burger a restaurant that was just in there it's just chilling listening to this old school rock music that was playing on this noisy radio uh, looted the whole place. I opened this door and this freaking man just <laughs> comes out of the sky. I was already wondering when he would arrive because you warned me for it. So I kind of yeah. knew what was going to happen. But then for some reason he rushed to me straight while I was <laughs> opening the door. Then I fell on the floor. He kept on like stamping and stuff. And then I died instantly. I'm like, you don't even give me the opportunity to even get out of this hell hole. So then I did it again. Uh, and the funny part was, and this is what I like about AAA games, is that I was like, you know what? I'm not going to open the door uh, of the, the Burger Town. I'm just going to go the other way around because there was yeah. another way you could. And then I went there and then there was a zombie who k kept holding the door locked. So I couldn't go there. So I had to actually always yeah. have to use it. Uh, in the end, I did escape the nemesis. It ended up in this exciting, you know, moment. And then it's like to be continued. So they, they kind of yeah. have me hooked. I might be spending some uh, monies on this game. Uh, but yeah, a fun demo. Totally recommend. Nice. 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 Good you guys want to hear about the chat? Like, sure, I go for it. Yeah, go yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah. We have uh, Johnny Wells who played Crete, Racket Fury for Exercise and Supermarket Sweep in real life. Supermarket Sweep in real life. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if he did that in real life, but that is an actual game. Okay. Uh, then Dave DeSyko has returned from the deaths. <laughs> and he said he had a pretty intense week. He finished down the rabbit hole almost finished Half-Life Alex and also played B Team and The Room VR. That is wow. like very busy. I don't even, where do you find How? the time to play yeah. so yeah. many games? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Watcher UK played down the rabbit hole, but the majority of the week was spent murdering craps and combined. Um, and then we have uh, Devo 1000. He played Apex Construct, Red Matter, all on the Oculus Quest. Nice, nice. Yeah. So uh, the, I did actually get to play another VR game this week. Surprise, surprise. Wow. Uh, and I actually played Paper Beast. Uh, oh, a bit of, yes, yes, bit yes. of an unusual title. Um, mm. It came out on PSVR. Uh, it's a PSVR exclusive wow. right now. Um, you had and, to uh, dust off your headset, I guess. I did. It was the first time I've used it in <laughs> a long time. Blow, you're, like, you're on the attic. It's like, whoa, yeah. look at this thing from the past. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. And it does feel a bit old now definitely aging uh but i still obviously still love the psvr and you know it's still the the, the headset that you gave me uh nathy actually which was two years ago this week um oh, wow because yeah. that's when i went full time on ah, youtube yeah so it was a gift been, yeah been two years now <laughs> um so i still appreciate that thank you very much um but paper beast uh is this game uh developed by um a, a developer called eric kahi and he's actually one of my favorite developers because he made one of my favorite all-time games uh called another world and it was one of my favorite games Games growing mm. up as a kid uh, he almost he also made from dust and this is a really unique game it's very different from anything else probably you've ever seen in vr before uh it's very sort of like an open world that you have to explore and it's all about exploration and the beasts these paper beasts uh which the world is kind of like inside a computer system so you're kind of exploring it a bit like journey for example uh it's very slow you kind of just explore mm. progress through you meet these creatures and each of these like different paper beasts they look different um but they also have like a unique ability and then you utilize their unique ability to progress through the world and solve puzzles Ooh. um so it's quite unique in that sense um so for example like some of the beasts can manipulate the terrain so if like your your path is blocked yeah. then you can you can point the beast to go and uh, clear the way for you for example but then these beasts might be like prey to some other bigger beasts later on and then you oh. have to kind of manage the beasts like together and then so it is is puzzle solving world exploration but very relaxing that, and chill that reminds me of one game Okay. FIFA Piñata. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not, not, not too dissimilar, I don't think. Yeah, it, you know, it's very slow paced, kind of chill. Um, but nothing is explained in this game. Like, there, there isn't really too much of a tutorial. So you're kind of thrown in the deep end. You have to mm. learn things by yourself. Uh, I played using the, the DualShock because it doesn't have move support, as far as I'm aware. Um, also, it doesn't have smooth locomotion options, which I think is a bit strange for a VR title nowadays. Uh, so it is teleport only. Mm. Um, 
the good things I would say about the game is that it kind of gives you this kind of Jurassic Park vibe uh, because they kind of look like dinosaurs, like paper dinosaurs. So maybe this might float Rowdy's boat a little bit. Um, and and some of the, the the creatures are like huge, so they've got this like real scale to them, which is kind of nice. Um, but I don't think it'll be for everyone because it is very slow paced slow and it's paced, kind of like yeah. kind of like a walking simulator, you know, in a way. Okay. Um, so it hasn't got the action to it very slow paced kind of you have to manipulate the the world and you know look after these beasts and sort of learn about their mm. abilities and attributes um so i kind of enjoyed it for about an hour or so and at that point i was like i think i've seen enough now wow. and um at th that point i don't think i will be going back um it's not got enough intrigue for me to go back and, and find out what it's all about so so this is one of the last games that is coming out for the PlayStation VR in a way. Um, it's one of the last, you know, remaining tiles that had to, you know, make it. We mm. still have Iron Man, of course. Um, yes. I don't know what the plan is with that. It has been delayed once. Um, yes. Yes. And now, of course, with the whole pandemic going on, they they were at a lot of events promoting it. So I don't know if that had any impact on there. And of course, also, you know, studios having to now work from home. Is also mm -hmm. a thing that can impact the development uh, of of you know certain VR titles. So I'm, it's very silent around it. Um, I think they're just gonna push for that that date still. You can't change it again. If the, if you do, it might impact your sales. But yeah, I hope so. But yeah, like you said, in terms of other PSVR titles on the horizon, it's kind of slim pickings really, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, and and then also like I think most uh, PlayStation VR titles uh, in the first two years were like amazing. Um, yeah. But then uh, you'll, we also had a few missers, like, you know, Golem being mm -hmm. kind of like a disappointment, although that, of course, had had its issues. Um, mm -hmm. But if you look at um, the overall library that PlayStation VR has built up, it's ginormous. It's yeah. ginormous. You know, you have Static, you have Astrobot, you have Blood and Truth. You have, of course, the the the, the demos, you know, the PlayStation Resident VR World's demos. Resident Evil 7. Um, Firewall. Firewall, exactly. Firewall. You have the persistence. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you could go on forever. There's so yeah. many awesome titles. So uh, yeah, I just hope that uh, you know this this last kind of year because I think this is kind of last year for the the PlayStation VR. Of course, you will be able to use it with a new PlayStation, but uh, I hope that we're gonna see a next generation uh, lineup of titles because of course they will be using new controllers, new. I think a new way of tracking, uh, you know. I hope so. Uh, it not, needs it. it they're not going to use. It. They're not going to use the lights no. anymore. I don't and, think and, so. And on the. Song, we need a <laughs> is, that, is that my Alexa speaking? Just <laughs> <laughs> so. Alexa. Do you know she, I'm busy? She, Alexa, she, she, she stop. Stop. <laughs> she, she wants. She wants to replace Sim right now. This, this, like, this is the second time this week I've been attacked by Skynet. <laughs> you know, like if you were there during my uh, Half-Life Alex stream, you'll know that uh, I was attacked by sex bots during that stream. <laughs> and uh, Alexa, <laughs> stop! Is she going to shut up now? <laughs> Jesus! Wow. Yeah. So yeah, my uh, my uh, my Half-Life Alex stream got sabotaged by sex bots, and Nathy had to come in and save me. Um, so if you uh, if you're around during the stream, thank you for sticking by after the uh, the attack. Um, but yeah, like I think the, the one thing that we can uh, take from the, the, the sort of quiet period for PSVR is that it's likely that a lot of the established developers are going to be working on the next mm. gen titles. Yeah. And that means that when PSVR 2 hopefully launches, it will have a really good first party library to yeah, launch yeah. straight off the bat. I, I can't good. wait. I can't wait. I, I, it, I think after Half Life Now and after the Valve Index, after the Quest, that's what I'm looking most forward to for yeah. what we at least know, because the rest we don't know what's going to come. But yeah, that's something I'm looking looking forward to because the thing that kept me back with PlayStation VR was was the was definitely as you said like the the tracking that you had to use with that and the and the fact that you had to face forward of course i come from a climate where i have been using all the headsets so you just know better if i only mm -hmm. use the PlayStation VR then like just look at all the players who had one they were super happy with the headset uh, and still are, you know, it uh, was a good investment, um, good price, you know, good lineup, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's something that will, if they uh, upgrade the whole, you know, hardware, that's something that will definitely uh, uh, make me go deeper into uh, their, you know, their stuff. Yeah, two words, Astrobot 2. That is what I want. Yeah. More Astrobot in my life. Absolutely. Astrobot in first person? 
No, I'm happy with it. It's, it's just more, just more. Yeah, of it. more. Yeah, true. Um, Ask her about multiplayer, so, dude. Multiplayer, oh yeah, sure. where it's like we we are. I would be down. You have to work together to. Yeah, yeah. Yes, for I like, sure. I like it, it. it works perfectly in the genre as well. I think. Yeah, that's true. So uh, let's get into some news then. Uh, yeah. First bit of news this week. Uh, with all the buzz around Half-Life Alex, you may have missed this bit of news. And that's that HP have announced a new upcoming VR headset, which is going to be made in collaboration with Microsoft and Valve. Kind of interesting combo there, because obviously HP uh, historically has only really worked with Microsoft for their Windows MR platform. Mm-hmm. Um, so a new listing for the headset appeared on Steam, claiming that this headset will be the new standard for VR, delivering an immersive, comfortable, and compatible VR experience with no compromises. Now, although this headset is being made by HP, the interesting part, of course, is the collaboration with Microsoft and Valve, um, because we don't have any sort of details uh, in terms of specs right now, mm-hmm. um, but it, they did have a very sort of brief trailer Um and when you pause the trailer, it does look like they've adopted the Valve Index off-ear headphones, which is kind of interesting. Um, but I'd, I hope that that's not as far as the collaboration with Valve has gone. Hopefully, you know, we get more in terms of this collaboration. But I, I do think it's a good feature to take from the headset. Oh, amazing! It's the one that is uh, yeah, like maybe like the the, the, the audio on the Index is just incredible, especially when you play something like Half Life Alex. And having played it on the Index and then also tested it out on the Rift S this week, mm. you know, the the difference is is huge. So yeah, if especially because. Um, I think it's an interesting concept to have the ears off of there mm. because like we used to say like, oh, you know, you need to be immersed in VR, you need to be immersed in VR, but mm. we actually now see that most people play in like an environment which has already not a lot of sensory deprivation. So uh, yeah. it's kind of interesting. Yeah, and bear in mind, you know, like the Valve Index, you know, I wore that thing nine hours straight almost, you know, Monday for Half-Life, and uh, it was fine. You know, I had marks on my face, of course, from the VR cover, but other than that, you know, my ears weren't heating up like, you know, when you wear headphones, so it's a super nice headset to wear for a long period of time. Um, So, yeah, so it it looks as though uh, this new HP headset has taken those uh, off-ear headphones from the Valve Index, put them on their headset. Amazing. Um, but because uh, it's still got Microsoft involved in this collaboration, I don't think it's going to be a Steam VR headset because that was my initial reaction. I thought, oh, it's going to have Steam VR tracking, mm. maybe adopt uh, the Index controllers as well. You know, because take the really nicest parts of the, uh, that, the Index. That would be a first because HTC is kind of moving away from, and then yeah. they yeah. and also like the the headset kind of looks like there are like sensors built around, right? Um, so I can't see any sensors for Steam VR tracking, and and no. this is and although I think it would be a smart move, and it would be interesting if it did adopt Steam VR tracking and and the index controllers, I do still think because of the Microsoft involvement in this, it's still going to be a Windows ML headset. Um, maybe it's like a Windows ML headset as standard, but maybe has Steam VR possibilities as well but that's i think that's highly unlikely it's either gonna be one or the other you know we haven't seen like a hybrid headset that can do both other than the uh, the cosmos but you need that adapter plate on the front mm-hmm. um so i still but think the it's market gonna... has been moving to inside out anyway so yeah it has it has um but but because they say it's like a no compromise headset it kind of makes me think that it might be steam vr tracking but i don't know like what do you guys think do you think this will be a windows mr headset do you think it'll be a steam vr headset uh and what do you think the, the valve implementation will be do you think it's just the audio or do you think maybe they'll use the controllers or yeah. maybe it's, something else i i just don't understand why hp is not making use out of their gaming brand because they have a gaming brand uh, mm-hmm. And then they could be pushing in that direction. But every time I hear about something new they do with VR, but it doesn't involve their gaming brand, I just instantly know it's enterprise. Yeah, well, this is the interesting thing, though, because the, the reverb was, of course, their enterprise headset, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And you're right, they've got this gaming brand, which is HB Omen. Um, but this this turned up on Steam uh, as, a, as a headset that you would buy for gamers, because you wouldn't sell... Uh, a, an enterprise headset on Steam necessarily, so it seems yeah. like this is a, aimed at you know consumer market, which is going to be super interesting. Yeah, but then slap the Omen brand on it and make it look cool. Yeah. But now it's yeah. still kind of yeah a generic looking headset. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I agree. And the Omen branding is pretty strong. You know, branding. You know, yeah. it's kind of cool. It's got like red. Everything's red. Yeah. Looks kind of interesting. So yeah, yeah, let us know what you think uh, in in the chat. ProTube VR I reckon it's just like a rebranded reverb. Uh, which <laughs> point? Could be possible in terms of display because, like, let's be clear, like the reverb had a pretty nice display. I think it was twenty one sixty by twenty one sixty. It was one of the highest end headsets um, 
around. It still is, you know, today. Great for uh, sim enthusiasts. Yeah. Um, but I think it was just the Windows ML platform that kind of let it down with the controllers. So, mm. you know, if they do yeah. in- integrate Steam VR uh, tracking uh, and controllers, do you? I, I, I do. I do think that if they say no compromise, that the headset is capable as well of like 144 frames per second. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Yeah, that'll be interesting. And it says, and like, uh, compatibility is part of their tagline as well. So, you know, it, it could be a bit of a jack of all trades, this headset. Um, but no, no official specs no. Uh, just yet. <laughs> uh, although Eric Hartley says it is called the HP Reverb G2, so the oh, second generation Reverb. Well, um, but it's very mysterious. It's very early to talk about this, I feel like. It's a bit yeah. uh, vague. <laughs> I don't know it, what it, it, to, it, I, I want to say, like, oh, to. you know, based on, on the on the, uh, on the 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 headphones, you know, you have, uh, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, totally want to have that just because audio wise headsets don't come close to what Valve Index is offering. My God, mm-hmm. does that sound eargasmic? But uh, it's 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 like um, the rest is I don't know it's it looks like a shell on a trailer right now I don't know what you put inside if you even did put something inside and you just mm. kind of uh, are still working on it while you're hyping people up that's kind of always the story nowadays and yep. there are so many VR ads that's coming out it's like yeah just prove yourself first you know show it on some places if you can because right now that's also it's like, a problem it's like we but... don't know how far this co- collaboration with valve goes right? yeah exactly that's, exactly that's that's kind of what it comes down to yeah i agree in terms of specs what would be the the most important spec for you would it be field of view would it be resolution would it be compatibility with steam vr would it be controllers what would it be steam vr is a pretty pretty decent uh, yeah. one i would say but next to that um, but that's again personal perspective um i think um you know in terms of let's say uh frame rate and in terms of resolution and field of view it's fine because if you play a game you're going to be immersed anyways so that's not but i i still think that for me something that works wirelessly in a, mm. in a good way that is built in, uh, mm-hmm. but can also be played with a cable, just kind of like what the Quest does, but then of course this PC VR focused would be welcome because I do like to play without a cable. So if that's something they do, yeah, that, that would be nice. That's something I would be interested in as a feature that most headsets don't offer, right? Yeah, So yeah. Uh, yeah. I think for me it's comfort, you know, as long as the headset's comfortable, then yeah. Then we can we can spend all you know we can do nine hour live streams and yeah, 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 yeah. if we want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I was yeah. I was I was gonna say compactness, but that I kind of mean the same thing as as, yeah. as what you said. Uh, I uh, think in terms of resolution and uh, frame rates, we've yeah. already like pushed like the barrier quite far. Yeah, mm-hmm. can always go further. I mean, I welcome that, but mm. at the same time, I do think it's important for headsets to become even more compact, even. Uh, uh, more comfortable yeah. and just improve on what we have already instead of trying to keep on pushing that very forward. Yeah, because you got to remember as well, like, you know, it's you need the PC to, to run these things. <laughs> you know, people are already struggling as it is, you know, with, with high-end PCs uh, to, to run these headsets. So, yeah, you know, making things yeah. uh, more comfortable, more compact, more affordable, more accessible is, is definitely the way forward. But still, nevertheless, I'm excited about a no-compromise headset from HP. <laughs> um, you know, the, 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 the first rever- reverb for me didn't really do anything for me um i thought it was kind of nice but i did find it kind of uncomfortable but i, I prefer the, using every other headset that i've got the best comment comes from the chat already saying uh flip aside saying if only it was on a turntable <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly yeah. then you take some marketing tips from hdc yeah well um so yeah, that's some news from HP about uh, an upcoming new VR headset in the works. Yeah. Uh, as soon as we've got some more information about it, we'll uh, talk yeah. about it on the show. Yeah. Um, next bit of news is about Sansa. Now, if you've never heard about Sansa before, I wouldn't necessarily blame you, as it was kind of a bit hidden away. It was kind of one of those social platforms that not many people mm-hmm. were really aware of. Uh, it was developed by Linden Labs, uh, who are the creators of Second Life, which you may have heard of. Uh, quite popular uh I would say a good five, six years ago. Although it still has a very good uh, user base now, still. But didn't they get into like some problems a little while ago with uh, looking for funding, or was that someone else with Second Life? Um, that could have been Sansa itself. Um, maybe that. I thought it was Second Life. Uh, could probably. be. So, could so, be. so, so I, I'm not sure of that. So Sansa was basically a, a, some sort of VR chat, but then very high end. Like extremely high end in that sense, they were also pushing for that like second life yeah. experience in VR. Yeah. Did you ever try Sansa, Rowdy? Uh, I went into it, but I was like, yeah. it's too much for me. <laughs> yeah. I uh, uh, I got to know them because of Ready Player One. 
because they yes. had these that that was the moment I was like wow you can check out like certain scenes from Ready Player One looked yes. great by the way um, mm. I think I explored it with you uh, yeah we went to the Star Wars museum oh yeah yeah we did yeah that was fun and also we went to uh, H's uh, uh, basement it was yeah. like uh, yeah. but it, it it looked great it looked great um, so from from that perspective sensor was like you know top notch and it yeah, was uh, yeah. cross platform too. Yeah, you're totally right. Like uh, in terms of like the visuals, it looked incredible. Like H's basement when Ready Player One came out um, had all like the uh, references from the different movies in there, all the vehicles from different yeah. movies in there. It had like an Ed Two Hundred Nine like r from RoboCop at the back there, there, and like the 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 ship from Spaceballs and stuff. Had so many awesome references in there, and it was amazing to explore it. And I think that was probably one of Sanzar's strongest features yeah. is that the, 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 the worlds were so detailed and rich yeah. and looked great yeah. um, although they did take a long time to load and I remember oh, we been Star Wars Museum it probably took about 10 minutes to load before we could even get in. <laughs> yeah yeah um, and it was me hosting around. it with the fastest internet on the planet yeah, exactly <laughs> exactly but you know exploring the the Star Wars Museum was so much fun I remember like getting the Greedo and and like popping him around the corners and, and voices and Kevin stuff Agbar, yeah, Agbar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was, that was oh, funny. Oh, yeah. Good times, man. Ak Good times. Ak Akbar merch. That's Akbar what it was. <laughs> Um, uh, but yeah, with Sansa, they they also sort of they were trying to encourage the sale of digital items because that was a big yeah. uh, revenue stream for yeah. them in Second Life. Never really took off in Sansa, but I know when we were talking with them, uh, trying to do stuff behind the scenes, they were trying to say, say oh, you could sell like you know a, a VR Oasis T-shirt in there or something like that, mm -hmm. but yeah. it never never came to fruition. Um, but other than that, gone for pillows. The, the, the mic pillow would have been a bestseller. I know you're right. It would have it would have sustained them. They would still be going now. You know they wouldn't have to sell it off. <laughs> uh, no, I'm joking. Um, but other than that, other than the fact that it looked amazing uh, with the visual fidelity, it didn't really have much else to offer. Uh, it didn't have like the numbers of VR chat or the quirkiness of VR chat uh, or the accessibility because with with Sansar, although it's on Steam, you had to download their proprietary app. You had to log into their proprietary app. Mm. You couldn't like boot it from Steam as as, as such. So it kind of had that extra step of getting into it, which kind of yeah. I think killed it in a way. I think I think they were too focused on on what they were making and what they were trying to let people experience than that they were focused on marketing. And they they kind of there was kind of like a letdown on that side, even with the Ready Player One thing. Um, mm. They weren't really promoting that big time or hosting mm. events with the community in a way like, hey, this is what we're doing. And so I, I thought that it went very like low under the radar for the for the community, yeah. for the VR yeah, community. And apparently, according to the chat, it was also rather expensive. Uh, Flip was side says that a virtual leather, leather jacket was $70. Holy crap. <laughs> wow. If that is true, that is indeed like... Yeah, that's They, they got the pricing a bit wrong then. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so so the reason why we're talking about Sansar is that this week it was sold uh, by Linden Labs uh, to a San Francisco-based tech company called Wookie uh, Project Corp. Wookie? Uh, Wookie. <laughs> Wookie? Uh, Wookie. <laughs> uh, Wookie. Not as in a Wookie, as in like oh, a Chewbacca. They probably because went to the Star Wars museum yeah, and yeah. were like, we need to have this. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what I thought. That's the reason why they bought it, just for the museum. <laughs> Wookie. That's what it's called. Wookie? Wookie. A Wookie. Uh, but it's still a Wookie, though. It's just a yeah. different way of saying it. That's true. It depends on <laughs> your accent. Um, so Linden Labs, they said uh, that they cho they've chosen to streamline its focus to continue the, developer the development and operations of the leading virtual world Second Life and licensed money services provider Tilia, uh, which is what they use to deal with all the microsan transactions in Second Life. Um, so they've ditched Sansar, which was going to be their VR Second Life, to focus on their main platform, which is Second Life. Um, we don't know, sadly, how much the acquisition cost, Wookie, um, but it's stated that the uh, the app is going to continue to run mm. exactly as it has before. I don't know. No. I don't know about this. I don't know about this. Like you the thing is, so? no. Well, I've, I've, I'm sure they bought it for the data. You know, uh, the, there there was so much data they collected. You know, with that uh, with that app. Mm -hmm. But uh, as we could see, it didn't work before. So why would it work now? Um, that's that's yeah. what I'm wondering. And the, basically, selling it off is like getting rid of it. And trying to get someone buy it that is crazy enough to you know, yeah. continue working on it. It would need some significant changes for me to be interested well, in going back into it, it again. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I just hope I didn't lost my leather jacket now. <laughs> yeah. 
Can you imagine you've invested all this money into it and then it does disappear? That, that would be really savage. Some people did. Some people did. Imagine yeah. buying Mike's merch for 70 bucks. Wow. Yeah, and you can't even take your, your, your digital mic pillow in, into other VR, social VR applications. That's the sad part. You know, you, you've, bought, you've bought it. But they wanted, yeah. to, they wanted to also build, like, portals between other, like, let's say, apps, right? Where you could just connect, like, oh, I jumped from this one to VRChat and then go from VRChat to that and kind of have this universal thing going on. Mm. Um, mm. We've been talking about that for ages. Like, we've mm-hmm. there but some, been so many companies that want to try yeah, and do there that. There was uh, High Fidelity who also did the same thing, yeah. um, who also didn't make it in the end. Um, there are so many. There are so many that some people use also, like, you know, you can buy virtual ground and then buy that or have, um, what is it, like Bitcoin stuff in there and kind of mine that yeah. way. It's like this whole world on itself. I, I don't always believe that the people who started are caring about VR and more about, hey, yeah, let's uh, about find money. some hype. Yeah. And uh, That was but, um, um, Somium Space, right? Somium Space, yeah. They are selling, I think, virtual uh, ground. Yeah. yeah, and you could I buy. Think... You could also buy a Tesla in VR. That's pretty well, awesome. That is kind of cool. But I think I think that's way that is way too early to be doing stuff like that. I think in VR just yet. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we're not. We, yeah. You know, we need we need an oasis first before we can start selling off digital property that yeah. is accessible to everyone. You know. Well, VR Chat is doing it right then. Kinda, yeah, kinda. Um, so that's some news about Sansar. It's not going anywhere, but it has been sold. So you okay, know, if we'll you're see. invested into Sansar, maybe it's time to sell off your leather jacket and uh, get your money out. But, <laughs> <laughs> you Apparently, know. according to Eric Hartley, he says that there's. It isn't also a coincidence that uh, the sale is happening before the 31st of March, uh, and apparently it is because the fiscal year in the U.S. Ends, yeah, of ends. course. Uh, at the end of quarter one. So. Yeah, so they maybe wanted to recoup some losses that they had made, you know, had investing into this platform. Maybe, yeah, that's a good point. Um, so yeah, that is Sansa. Um, still going to be around, but who knows for how long and if it's ever going to get changed into something better. Fingers crossed. Sell your leather jackets now, everybody. Yeah. Well, with a yeah, company sell your with pillows. Yeah, yeah, but with the with the name Wookie in there, I think we got a chance. Yeah, you trust the Wookies. I do. Yeah. Fair one. Okay, uh, last bit of news this week is uh, a bit of sad news uh, from Slash Gear, who reported that the Samsung Gear VR platform is coming to an end. Um, now, for those of you that have joined, you know, VR fairly recently with like the Oculus Go or Quest, you know, or PC VR headsets, you may have never even tried a Gear VR because it's kind of like old school now. Uh, but the Gear VR, let me just kind of explain what it was. It was kind of like an upmarket Google Cardboard, think about it that way. It was a plastic VR headset which could accommodate a Samsung Galaxy smartphone. Uh, And in many cases was given away as a bonus for free when you bought like a Samsung Galaxy. Um, And uh, so you you basically slotted your your phone into the front of it and that acted as the display. And you basically fired up the Oculus app and you could play like uh, Oculus games from there. Uh, It was only a three degrees of freedom headset and a three degrees of freedom single controller. Mm. Um, And it sounds probably kind of of rubbish now when you think about it looking back, but back then it was kind of a huge leap forward uh, in terms of visual fidelity because and comfort because we only had the Google Cardboard really and the Hamido and some other sort of like obscure little headsets yeah. around at that time. And this was really a big leap forward yeah, in terms of mobile it's been VR. Very, it's been very important for the whole VR industry. You know, it moved a lot yeah, of the absolutely. payload at the start. It was also one of the first uh, examples of something that really worked from a consumer level, you know, people really getting into it. Yeah, and absolutely. And they had their own little market as well. Yeah, and it was like the, a big collaboration as well because it was Samsung and, and Oculus working together to make this happen. Yeah. Um, and, you know, in terms of Oculus being involved, it was their store, you know, it was their app um, and they were selling the games through their app. So it was like Samsung providing like the, the case and the hardware and the phone and Oculus were providing the software in that sense. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously this, like you said, it, it was very important that this happened because this kind of led on to the development of the Oculus Go uh, which is basically like you know a, a super a souped up version of the Gear VR, but you didn't need a, a phone anymore because it was all built into the headset, which made it super accessible, super affordable, easy to use, and yeah. that kind of then paved the way, obviously, for the Quest. Quest. Uh, although they were kind of developed side by side, but you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, sadly, um, Samsung haven't been supporting the Gear VR for a long, long time now. Uh, many of their latest phones just ha- haven't worked with uh, you know the Gear VR platform. I think the Galaxy Eight. Was the last phone 
to work. Is that right, Rowdy? Uh, I don't know what the last one was, but I, I noted in the beginning that um, I looked for that when I bought my new note, but it wasn't already supported for like a while. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, so I think it was like the Galaxy 8 or 9, potentially. The chat is saying the S9 worked. Right, right. So, okay. uh, but after that, best. they pretty much dropped compatibility because, like you say, like the Note was significantly bigger, wasn't it, than the Galaxy? And, you know, maybe that didn't fit into the headset so well. Um, it wasn't luckily the one that exploded, right? The Samsung phone. Yeah, thankfully. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so as I said, like Samsung have been pulling support for you know this Gear VR platform for a long time now, uh, but it also seems that Oculus are, are finally pulling the plug on it. Um, and apparently, from the first of April, uh, various apps won't be available uh, from the story anymore. You know, the Oculus App Store uh, th- using this method, and the games that you already have installed won't get any further updates. Although, if you've installed these apps already, they'll always be there. You know, so you can continue to play them. You know, like they suspect they su- suspect nothing. I think is still like a you know uh, a Gear VR app uh, and like Augmented Empire, for example, is still a, a Gear VR app. So you'll still be able to play them, but you just won't get any updates. Yeah. And future apps are going to be unavailable. Yeah. The, the best one that I've ever seen was uh, was a was a guy I think on YouTube who had I think it was the Samsung Gear VR and he had like the Tinder logo on the front, like pasted over it. And he was in the subway and just going like, <laughs> like swiping left and right. It looked hilarious. It's, it's that iconic kind of thing. It's just like looking around and like swipe left, swipe right. They yeah. uh, they they should do some kind of ceremony when they you know close uh, things out and be like, okay, this is the headset that changed the uh, industry because yeah. of that and that. And I don't know, do something with it. Do something with it. Like you know, yeah. immortalize it, it in a museum or something. I don't know. Yeah, I've still got one somewhere, so it's nice to have a little piece of history still. Yeah. And and funny around. enough, there are still arcades using this. Uh, you know, when I wow. went to Star Park, they mm-hmm. had like this uh, ginormous machine that was kind of uh, simulating like you were flying a helicopter, and they were just using that uh, because yeah. it's very cheap. <sighs> it's easy to also you know change up. It's solid. Um, so yeah, there, there there were like moments where you saw the Gear VR was getting used with you know uh, simulators. I think Samsung was constantly showing that with people in this roller coaster in these you know where they're like in this multiplayer experience together. Mm. So yeah, it, it it definitely showed you know the potential of VR early on. Um, the main problem was just that the phone was still bloody expensive. Yeah, put it in there. Well, for a yeah. Samsung phone, it was still pretty you know good deal. Uh, if you yeah, put an iPhone on like- it, then. Uh, I remember that it got pretty hot as well and the battery life, it would kill the battery life. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to use your phone for anything else, you were kind of screwed. Um, but I remember having, uh, I remember like, I think it was big screen actually that gave me my, my gear VR. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll keep that and cherish it and it'll be put on the shelf as a piece of a piece of history for the, the VR museum when I can swing on my, my rocking chair museum. one day and say, back in the day, you don't know how good it was, you know? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Animal Crossing. Ah, no. No, yeah. Well, with this with this pandemic uh, continuing to just you know go on, maybe instead of making videos, you should just open a museum, uh, yeah. and then just be like, okay, one person at a time can go inside. You need to wash your hands and yeah, wear don't this, touch and, anything. Yeah. and then uh, you know with some soap next to you, a table, one uh, <laughs> one dollar per uh, entry, and then uh, just make your money that way. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, so uh, farewell to Gear VR. Farewell. It was an important stepping stone for the VR industry. Let's wave, and, let's uh, wave it goodbye while it's leaving yeah. the... You goodbye. Know. We we give you a send-off and we salute you for your hard work. <laughs> and, uh, you know, without without you, we probably we probably wouldn't be where we are today with the Oculus Quest. So yeah, that's true, though. That's yeah. true. Yeah. We appreciate you very much, Gear VR. Wow. Uh, so that is the uh, end of the uh, news this week. So uh, now it's time to hand it over to Unpredictable Rowdy uh, with uh, <laughs> what, could be, what could be the most amazing VR games you can play next week or the yeah, who knows? Who knows? You never well, know what I'll you're going to get for. It's potluck. I started off with saying apparently uh, Half-Life got released. I don't know if anybody knows about that. Um, but, uh, that well, game is available now if people yeah. are interested in it. Uh, you can okay. play it. Yeah, I don't know. Then, uh, the 31st of March, uh, mark it in your calendar, lies beneath on the Oculus Rift and the Oculus Quest. I didn't find the price of it yet, so if anyone knows it, feel free to let me know. But uh, I don't. I don't know what the price is on that. It's one. definitely uh, not free. It won't be free. No, okay. I don't think that. Um, 
Well, we've talked about it before, I think, when they first announced it. And uh, I think we all agree that the art style of it is something that uh, that draws us to this. Uh, I'll, I'll briefly summarize what this is about. So Lies Beneath is a single-player survival horror game with a heavy dose of action. Uh, something has gone horribly wrong in the sleepy town of Slumber, Alaska. Now, returning college student May must fight to save her father and her sanity from the terrifying townsfolk and creepy creatures infecting her hometown. Experience a living comic book full of frightful scenarios as you uncover the secrets of slumber mm. and May's past. And I think that comic book style is really what like sets this one out. I think we compared it previously to uh, to uh, thirteen, uh, the game as well, mm -hmm. which is a brilliant game, I think, and also a great uh, comic book series. Um, but that's what this art style like reminds me a little bit of. Um, you have a full arsenal of melee and ranged weapons. You will fight monsters uh, across the menacing remnants of her hometown. And along the way, you will also need to solve puzzles in the surroundings and find lore objects to uncover hidden truths. Okay. Lines Beneath features several difficulty levels and comfort options, so you can tailor the experience to your preference. What do you mm. guys think about this one? Yeah, I, li I like the art style. I think it looks super nice. You know, the mm -hmm. comic book art style works well in VR. You know, like yeah. when we play Borderlands, for example, that kind of cell shaded look yeah. does work well. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of the uh, there was a there was a game, a pancake game called uh, House of the Dead Grindhouse, came out uh, a, a long time ago uh, on the Wii, I think it was. <laughs> on and, the Wii, and, oh god, and that had a kind of similar sort of art style, comic book art style. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it looks well, kind of interesting. Hopefully, it, it turns out well. It's developed by Drifter. You know, they made Gunheart. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. I'm I mean, these are guys know what they're doing. And they, didn't they make Robo Recall as well? They did the port for Robo Recall and Quest. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, there's a really cool scene in the trailer. I don't know if you guys spot it, but where the guy like uh, catches the the, uh, the what is it the knife that gets thrown mm -hmm. at him and he like, mm -hmm. throws it back really like that part so i think it will be yeah. fairly visceral uh, as well yeah nice yeah drifter is a great studio so i mm. i I, uh, I hope they will be able to pull uh, something uh, nice off here something they also cool. uh, did the uh, a part of the ready player one uh, experience for vive um i, yes. th I think they were kind of uh, carrying the whole uh, yeah. the whole yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know uh, was it was it Rise of the Gunters? Yeah, yeah, that, that's what we played together. But the yeah, the, right. the the gun uh, play that they made uh, in Gunhard is just amazing. You know, if they just use that, uh, what yeah. they learned from that, it's great for sure. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very cool art style. It's gonna be tough though. You know, releasing a week after uh, yeah, yeah, Half Life Alex. I think uh, <laughs> I mean a lot of people spent their money on that, and but it looks it looks like a cool title. So. I'm giving them uh, the benefit on the doubt yeah. of the doubt for succeeding. So sell your liver. <laughs> yeah. Next up, uh, Arizona Sunshine, the Dead Man DLC, which I believe we all played, uh, yeah. has yeah. now oh, yeah, also yeah. come out on the Oculus Quest on the 26th of March, and the price price that I found this for that was two dollars forty nine cents. Uh, coming from, of course, our, our Dutch friends uh, over at uh, Vertical Games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this all-new campaign mission takes place in the final days before the anti the VR zombie apocalypse. Uh, it is available for $2.49 with Oculus Store cross-buy support. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to taking players on a prequel story mission, the Deadman DLC features six new achievements, three new weapons, and wow. three new masks. Uh, we can take photos and explore the world at your own pace, become immersed with some of the latest visual tech provided mm. by Unreal Engine 4. So coming out on the Oculus Quest, um, <laughs> I think that we were all, uh, we all played this on the Oculus Rift, I believe, the, or on the HTC 5. Yep. Um, yeah. We were a bit disappointed with this one, I believe. The DLC, uh, yeah. With this DLC, because it, it was rather short, yes. if I remember correctly. Uh, since uh, you need to launch a nuke, I think mm -hmm. that was uh, that's kind of the story. And the next one, the DLC after that, sets a bit uh, the story after that. Yeah, the next one was the damned. Yeah, it's it's and like I'm I'm just a little Arizona tired. I I, I just play mm -hmm. too much of this game. <laughs> I just can't play more of it anymore. Like I just know what I can expect. Well, I know what it's all about. It's a classic. Yeah. I get it. But now it's an older title as well. Already, but I would not play it anymore. Now I I'm done with Arizona. But on the Oculus Quest. Um, 
if I mean, you've never played it on any other platform, uh, then yeah, go for it. Yeah, then you go know, for it. Yeah. 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 But I think, I think you know, Nathan said, like, we've been playing this game for how many years now? Oh, Three, four years? Yeah, that's yeah, crazy. Feels like. So, um, we still haven't been able to connect, Nathan. No. Well, <laughs> the, the, the funny thing is, like, you know, like, Nathan and I like, played uh, uh, the damn DLC together, and, like, we had, I think we laughed so much just about, like, doors opening and stuff like that. <laughs> Yeah, the doors. Oh, the doors <laughs> in this game, yeah. And the way the characters walk. It's um, just the mechanics. The mechanics, we were just how ancient this game has become. We yeah. were laughing about that, really, like the story or anything else. No, but, uh, you know, but I... feel like the, this title is still something like... Uh, I see this as like still one of my favorite titles in VR just because of the memory that I have from when I first played yeah, okay. this. I think it's, yeah. it's... It was the first one of the first VR games that came with like at least like a proper story. Uh, yeah. and shooting mechanics so uh, i do applaud them for put, doing put that it, put it this way like if you own a quest and you don't own any other headset or have the capability to connect it to a pc it's the best zombie game you can play yeah, yeah. Right. So, for sure yeah so, but you know if you can connect it then you should still play killing floor yes or saints and sinners or saints yeah. and sinners yeah but yeah. but killing, killing floor, floor is all game. is an online game that you can yeah. play together. I think, I th yeah, I think the benefit with the, with the Arizona Sunshine is you can still play it co-op on Quest. Yeah. So that's that's yeah. pretty great. You, yeah, there's no, not many co-op games on Quest, so no, that's pretty good. It is. So yeah. just just don't take me serious on this part. It's, it's just, just that uh, we've been playing this game for a long that's, time. That's crazy. <laughs> it's it's so we're, we're swinging the lamp a bit. We're showing our age. Yeah. yeah. I think they've made so many different things after that as well. Yeah. Uh, but Looking anyway, enough about one. vertical games. Um, next up is a PlayStation VR title that we all know as well. It's even older, I believe, than Arizona Sunshine. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's called uh, Tilt Brush, uh, available now for PlayStation VR for $19.99. And it became available yesterday on the 27th of March. And it's published by, very interestingly, Sony Interactive Entertainment. Ooh. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Ooh, right? that's yeah, it's, well, yeah. It's yeah. originally, it's, it, it would, if I'm correct, it were the Google developers that were working on this. Mm. Right? Well, I yeah, know, absolutely. I know them from the, from the Spider Man, the Spider Man uh, thing, and and what else did they make? Yeah, they yeah, made yeah. another movie experience. Are the yeah, Ghostbusters well, one? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So what they did now is they teamed up with the folks over at Outer Loop Games and the creators of Falcon Age to bring the full Tilt Brush experience to PlayStation. Oh, wow. Okay. Outer Loop. And I myself have a have, have a little bit of a special relationship with this title because mm -hmm. I proposed to to my oh, girlfriend. Oh yeah, this, uh, you did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, maybe you should talk about that. You should tell us tell that story again. I think some people would have missed that first time around. Um, well, what well, basically happened? My, my girlfriend isn't really into um, the entire VR kind of thing. I mean, she likes it, uh, but she's not a gamer. Mm. Uh, she she sees more potential for it to be used in like uh, making people aware of uh, of difficulties in other countries or uh, training simulators. That's more where she sees the potential. But she's not a gamer, so she's not really interested. In it. But she knows that I like it, so she just lets me do my thing. But I thought because I spent so much time in it anyway, like maybe, and it's ideal because you're like zoned off. You, people can't really see what you're doing if you turn the screen off your, off your monitor. So you can spend a lot of time in that preparing something without them knowing what you're doing. So what I did was I built like a, a virtual reality scene um, of like you know how I wanted to propose. So I, I made this like forest and i'm not an artist by any means but uh I, I did try to make something that was at least moderately appeasing to the eye <laughs> it was uh, good i thought it was good so what, what I, did, I made like a little waterfall and there was like some rocks and little forest it's like so glitters around so it looked very like peaceful and happy very small and cozy and, I, and, and she had to like walk around and there was a little campfire and then she had to walk around the tree and there was a little bush there. And then behind the bush, there was this um, this, uh, this wooden pole kind of with like the, uh, I put the ring on like a little rock there. So there was like the ring there. And then I had like a little plate above that that said, will you marry me? So she was just like looking around and said, yeah, yeah, you just need to walk around. Just follow the, follow the lines. But I was like, okay, following the lines. And you could see little red like she was getting a little bit annoyed. But I was like, oh, why am I doing this? <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. Like, before she put annoyed. it on, she looks at the camera and you can see like the frustration in her eyes. Like, oh, not this again. Like, <laughs> But then eventually she realized what was going on when she saw the plate. And uh, that's how it, uh, how it, how it kind of happened. Amazing story. Amazing yeah. story. 
yeah. and that's the thing like you know like tail brush has a special place in a lot of people's hearts because it was some of like the first some for a lot of people their first vr experience you know and, and creating art around you is such a magical feeling because yeah. you've never experienced it before yeah. sit inside your own house yeah. that you made sit on a yeah. chair that doesn't exist but people make amazing things in tall brush oh yeah and i think one of the most amazing features is that you can play it back you can't just like only look at it yeah but you can like see how people have drawn it so you can see the progress of how the the painting or the artwork has come into uh, construction which i yeah. think is an amazing feature mm. And that's what I did. Uh, I created a VR 180 video um, yeah. about like my history, like leading up to YouTube. And uh, I uh, I asked uh, the savvy life to create the artwork, uh, and she did an amazing job. And she literally painted yeah. like images like that I provided like like real life pictures, uh, recreated them using tilt brush. And then when you sit there in VR, you can see them come to life in 3D, and it is really magical. <laughs> Um, yeah. and emotional as well yeah yeah totally 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 emotional yeah um yeah. but yeah there's some great artists out there as well like um rosie summers is another amazing tilt brush artist that you should check out um so yeah i'm really pleased that it's come to psvr uh, because i think a lot of people will really dig it you know if you're an artist yeah. you'll, you'll yeah. love this yeah I, I do find it kind of interesting that sony interactive entertainment is releasing this now because they just released dreams as well and I think we all want Dreams to have VR support. I actually went to the launch party uh, because I had an Belgian launch party for Dreams, um, which I think has a lot of potential for virtual reality specifically. There have been people already making amazing things with that. If any of you watch uh, ever watch like Avatar, The Last Airbender, mm -hmm. there's a guy who's making a full-on game and it looks really, really good in Dreams. Wow. So I would, like to, I would like to get that actually like VR support so people could like, put their creativity in this. But yeah. of course, like I, I welcome Tilbrush as well. Is is that on the roadmap for Dreams? Have they sort of confirmed? Yeah, that? They, they, actually, on the launch party themselves, they said that uh, one of their biggest goals was to get this VR support as well. Nice. Uh, but it, it's not easy to do it because they develop the tools for making, you know, con constructing the actual game mm. um, yeah. for quite a while. Uh, and I, I, it's it's not easy to get all of those tools into the virtual reality environment as well. But it, it was on their roadmap. And they see it as a as pretty much a priority to get yeah. that. Uh, Could it be that they just release this on the new PlayStation instead because it has more power? So then you will be able to to build and experience in VR because that's like double trouble. Yeah, but I, if a game like that would get VR support on like the PlayStation, which has two million, you know, over two two million headsets sold, I think that would be a huge boost for VR as well uh, because the amount of stuff that you can create in that is just mm -hmm. mind boggling. And, and really good yeah yeah, yeah. okay uh next up uh, another psvr title actually the the next two all release on uh, uh the playstation vr i got two more for you wow. so the next one is a uh, final assault um mm. and again an older title that we've uh, known already for quite a while it's now releasing on the playstation vr headsets uh on the 31st of march it's made by phase a lot interactive i didn't find a price for it but i do know that the price on steam mm. For the uh, for the original game is twenty four ninety nine, uh, and I think we all know this game already. Also, because we actually know uh, the world champion in this the world title, champion, the yeah. world champion, uh, Brad Lynch. After competing yeah, with other familiar faces such as uh, uh, Reality Check VR, he was there. Kaz and Cherry also participated in the tournament, but yep. eventually Brad Lynch uh, emerged as the victor. Yeah. Um, so what is Final Assault? This is an action-packed World War II themed RTS built from the ground up uh, to capitalize on the power of VR. You tower over the battlefield as war rages around you 360 degrees. You can command jeeps, tanks, and artillery in massive ground battles as the skies erupt in bullets, flak, and dynamic dogfights. Execute airstrikes and bombing runs as you advance your troops towards enemy territory. Control your units by drawing paths for precise, direct combat. Strategic decisions have consequences that require quick thinking and fast VR reflexes, which is exactly the reason why I was so bad at this game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I sucked at it too. Yeah, oh. they. Uh, it's, 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 it, there's so much going on. It's, it's, it's brilliant. I, I really applaud people uh, for making something like this. But um, as much as I want RTS games. I find this incredibly <laughs> difficult to, to yeah. do this in, in a it's, VR. It's funny that they they asked me to also join their tournament in China 
Yeah, well, I, 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 I just, I said, like, like first of all, you know, I, I have a job as well. You know, I have to make videos and things like that. I don't have time to just, you know, practice every day to be the best uh, of the world. Plus, again, like, you know, RDSs are also not my uh, cup of tea. But uh, oh, I, I, uh, I absolutely love RTS games, but I like not to play them with humans. Well, I like to play <laughs> yeah. them. On, uh, so far, I have liked them, you know, on a pancake screen, but I haven't really seen uh, one. Well, maybe Out of Ammo was one that I really enjoyed. Um, I don't know, it's really cool. But uh, besides that, I haven't played that many RDSs that I really thought were addicting enough as much as like Common and Conqueror and, and, and those kind of titles. So. Yeah. Although I thought, um, I, thought I, pre I personally preferred Brass Tactics. Oh, I, I Brass thought Tactics, that was yeah. Uh, yeah. A, a nicer game in my but opinion. Again, I, I would like to get an RTS game which does not uh, feature multiplayer. <laughs> like I would <laughs> yeah. like to get like some with uh, a little bit more of like a chill computer to play yeah. against than like a storyline like age of empires but not the it's basically just because you suck at them like like i do yeah, <laughs> really, yeah. i got beaten by Cass and cherry in like uh some like knockout wow. of uh of brass tactics i think it was cherry got me with a sneaky dragon I, I Yo, still... they, they beat me too but they cheated they, they cheated <laughs> <laughs> those girls cheat they, they're not here to defend themselves so we can say that yeah no, really <laughs> no we love them mind. really yeah, and then uh, last but not least, uh, another game that's releasing on the PlayStation VR, uh, but a little bit later than the other platforms, because it's also releasing for the Oculus Rift, Oculus Quest, and Steam for 16 euros 79 cents, which is a very weird number, but okay, it's down the rabbit hole. Uh, mm. It released on 26th of March 2020 from Cortopia Studios. So down the rabbit down the rabbit hole is a VR adventure set in Wonderland prior to Alice's arrival. In the game, you will discover a girl in search of her lost pet Patches that has wandered into Wonderland. You will guide her as she moves through the mysterious world, looking for a missing pet. But which way? Um, they have multiple playable characters, has a rich 360 degrees diorama, various unique puzzles, hidden collectibles, and a unique VR locomotion. And Paradise Decay describes this as. This is something really special and magical. And this is something you can only do in VR. Which I like. It's, yeah. a, it's a perfect description. It looks very interesting. Something that we haven't seen that much in VR. It looks a little bit like a side scroller uh, released the past week as well. Yeah, I, I, we got to play this one at Gamescom, and I, I really liked it. Yeah. Uh, it's got some nice puzzle elements and some like uh, platforming. And the great thing is, like, the deeper you go down the rabbit hole, you can look up at where you've been and it's still mm -hmm. there, do you know what I mean? So as you go yeah, deeper yeah. down, like progress through the game, you still see exactly where you came from, which is super nice. What, um, what the gameplay, like kind of, I haven't played it yet, but how it looked like, it reminded me just a little bit from um, the Fisherman's Tale. Yeah. A Fisherman's Tale. Like mm -hmm. it has those like gameplay mechanics that you only have in VR again. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that. I like yeah, got some cool puzzles. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. That was it. Okay. Nice. Nice. Some nice releases this week, actually. Not actually, bad. yes. Like, uh, like we have Half Life Alex, and we I know we said like, oh, it's going to be tough for other developers to come out with something decent yeah. after that. But there's actually been a few decent games. It's only again like, how are they going to compete with a title like Half Life? Alex? Yeah, the, the the game right now that's kind of like on my priority list uh, is one that we mentioned on last week's show, which is the Room VR. I think yeah. uh, that yeah, looks yeah. super nice. Yeah. Uh, and like they have actually, that's the surprising thing. Like I saw on Twitter, because I followed the developers there as well, that their game actually launched quite impressively, which I, I find surprising and good as well, that there is, even after Half-Life Alex, there was still life for VR, you know, like mm. there's still people interested in playing other titles. Yeah. So maybe we are indeed going to see that effect from Half-Life pulling more people into VR. And then mm. those people looking for new titles to be playing that are also good. So. Yeah, that would be really good. Like, you know, the, the whole industry benefits from Half-Life being released. You know, it, it, it pushes uh, people to more content on the VR platform for sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to hopefully, I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to play it next week, but it's on my priority list, put it that way. Um, right, so let's move into our main topic then. Let's talk about Half-Life Alex, but we're not going to get into any spoilers just yet. So you can still stick around. No spoilers just yet. I'll give you plenty of warning before we talk about any spoilers because Rowdy doesn't want any spoilers because he hasn't finished the game either. So he'll be very upset if I spoil anything for him. So I won't spoil it for you, I promise. <laughs> First up, let's talk about uh, this bit of news because Half-Life Alex, of course, came out on Monday. It's not even been a week <laughs> released weird. yet. It's so weird. 
Uh, and before we get into our thoughts on the game, let's talk about what this happened, because there's been clips surfacing online of people being able to mod and tweak Half-Life Alex to play it without the use of a VR headset yeah. already. <laughs> This is crazy. Like, I, I, and you got to admire the enthusiasm from the community to a certain degree. That, that you know they've gone to the extent and effort to to find this out. And I think Tyler McVicker was probably one of the first ones that started this because I, I saw he was doing a like a deep dive, a data mine, as he likes to call it. Sneaky stream uh, on, um, on on Twitch, and he was going through the files, and all of a sudden he found a file where it could enable like a, a non VR mode and you could use a, basically a keyboard and mouse and Alex's hands would be like stuck in place and you could navigate through the world. It looked- was that only for the first, uh, the first scene? Uh, I think it works in any scene in the game, okay. but I think I don't think you would be able to do everything. Uh, I think it's just like a, a dev mode testing mode clearly uh but obviously he was saying that that modders and tweakers can utilize what is already there and adapt it and make it into a proper full offline you know like a uh, non-vr mode uh basically uh but i think the problem is you know like it looked super janky and of course you know like yeah. it looks so bad <laughs> yeah it looked it looked awful um and I, I think this is the first time we've seen this, right? Like um, the, the the community, the non VR community, has put so much time and effort into wanting and making something and adapting it into a non VR game. I don't think we've seen that before in in the VR industry, right? No, no, no definitely um, not. So it's kind of interesting, but we know obviously from the very beginning when Half Life Alex was announced that there was this huge backlash from like the traditional gaming community that you know, that, you know they didn't want a VR game; they wanted a traditional Half Life game. You know, they they said that they'd been waiting you know like years for you know a, a, another game, which we all had been, um, and they just weren't happy about the fact that it's in VR. And still, even now, despite the game having over thirteen thousand <laughs> reviews on Steam and over being overwhelmingly positive as an overall score, people are still super salty about yeah. the fact that this game is in VR. Like, if you want, if you want to sit down and have a laugh and just grab some popcorn and go into like the uh, the, the the community tab of Half Life Alex and just read some of the the, but, the, like, the complaints. I mean, we, we've had this discussion before. Like, it's not going to be fun. It's not going to be fun it's, to play. No, they do, like but they don't care. They want to play it. The thing is, they don't care about VR. They just want to play it, and they play it this way, and they just don't care. I, I, rem I remember it's this. Hard this, to accept, but it's this, true. I had this discussion on on Twitter like a while back when like people were like raving about this, and I remember mentioning it's like it's like how are you gonna do like the mechanic of like you, know, you swipe everything away, you pick yeah. up the ammo, you open up the gun, you load it in, you pull it back, and then you fire three rounds. And he's like, well, for starters. I would press just E. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you don't get it. Like, <laughs> no, no. And I think it comes from a lot of um, naive, you know, a lot of people are naive about how good it actually is to do these mechanics in VR because they've clearly never tried it before. And I do understand that a lot of people are upset because of the cost of, course, of VR. Of I get that. I get that. But it's the natural evolution of of gaming. It, it clearly is, and we we've obviously been big believers of, believers of this for a long, long time. Because what what winds me up is that a lot of these people that complain are the same people that are spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on new graphics cards, yeah. bigger and and faster refresh rate monitors, but yet they're just not willing to spend four hundred bucks on like a headset. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Well, um, the, the, I I think that part is not uh, is not that like. You know the the problem is is that um, like if if I play a game and I know what I need to be able to experience that game properly, then I would yeah. just wait it out until I can. But for some yeah. people, they they are just willing to sacrifice their first magical moment with that game and just play yeah. it the way it's not meant to be played. And that's yeah. what I don't understand. So and I would be able to hold out until. I would be able to buy something like that, but others are just like they. Some people play it because they they hate VR, or at least that's yeah. what they think until they finally ch checked it out. And they're like, "Wow, this is amazing! Maybe I should," you know, because we have seen that before. The rebellion against VR has been pretty strong, um, but yeah. after people tried it, they're like, "Oh yeah, okay, this has potential." Um, but you know, as you said on the discussions of Steam, there are loads of people who just hate VR and they want to raise the middle finger by playing it in two D. It's like you see. It still works and we can still do this. And then yeah. there are people who just, they just can't wait. They want to play it now. They don't have the money for a VR headset and jump in. So you have these two groups of people that, but yeah, as a gamer, 
I want to respect the genre I play or the game I play by mm. playing it the way I can. And if that's a, needing yeah. an Xbox or a PlayStation or a VR headset or yeah. some Wii controllers, whatever, then so be it, you know? Yeah. And, and Nim Sony made a really valid comment in the chat and he said, but these are the same people that spend thousands of dollars on, on mobile phones, you know, yeah. <laughs> and it, it's true. It's true. We all, we all do. Um, but yet, you know, they're just not willing to take this jump. And I do understand that a lot of people still think it's gimmick. You know, we, we had our fingers burnt with 3D TVs before. Mm. I get it. But, you know, VR has been around for such a long time now. It's so well established. There's no risk of it going anywhere anytime soon. Oh. Um and, and now with Half-Life Alex, you know, again, raising the bar in terms of what's possible in VR, you know, it just goes to show that these people are going to eventually have to bite the bullet if they're going to stick with the times because they're going to be left in the dust. Well, yeah, uh, but it's it's interesting to see the resistance uh, uh, of this because this is the it's first time there. we... Yeah, but this is I, the... This is the it f- happened with Steam, like, remember? Steam? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I remember. A requirement uh, in order to play... Uh, I, I believe even Half Life. It was Half Life, yeah. It was. Yeah, Half-Life so, so I mean, Valve has a reputation of doing that. It's, mm-hmm. The same with like graphics cards. Like yeah. you have to like get one of like the latest graphics cards in order to yeah. to play this kind of game. And, oh, and Valve, upset about this. yeah, you're, you're you're totally right. Valve are all about pushing forward. You know, uh, pushing the industry forward, doing like really innovative things. Like if you look at Half Life, and then like with Half Life Two when they developed the new engine, you know, with all the physics and and the yeah. gravity gun and stuff like that, it was so like next level. It was like it was almost like we were living in the future at the time because we'd never seen anything like it before in terms of like story narrative and these amazing physics in the game. And they're doing exactly the same thing with Half-Life Alex. They're just pushing the industry even further out there. Mm -hmm. They've developed this amazing engine, which we're going to get into very shortly. It it feels like for, for, for me personally, it feels like, you know, we as the VR community having this like army of people rising up, you know, in the gaming, (laughs) in the gaming scene. And then you have all these like pancake dudes that don't want it to happen. And they're of course with way more than we are still. Yes. And for years maybe to come. But yes. then, then suddenly this behemoth of a of like almost like a titan that just comes out of space named Valve that just has this ginormous shield and pushes way harder than than someone has ever seen. And these pancake gamers are like holy crepsels it's like valve now joining the other side of things yeah. it's almost like this yeah. this war of the worlds happening you know what i mean yeah. and and having yeah. valve having valve uh, being the ones now that says like okay we believe in vr we're just going to push it to the you know the limit it's great i feel so yes, i feel so comfortable with valve now being a part of our community being able to help us out with that because they can really set some moves they can yeah we, we may be been, outnumbered, been, but we're not outgunned. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> true. That's, that's how it's anyway. It's been interesting to see the evolution as well from like the announcement when Valve made it initially to like when the first trailer was released. Like first people were like, oh, it's not going to be any good because it's like a VR game. VR games are never good. Then the trailers got shown and people were like, oh, it's never going to look that good as this is the trailer. You know, that's how it changed mm-hmm. like that. And then the game came out and it's, I mean, it's, brilliant let's be fair like uh, yeah. I, it reminds me of a tweet that i saw from from anthem the uh, the h3 vr developer and uh, hobbit switches and Anthem. he said if there's one thing that half-life alex had shown is that every vr developer needs to hire a writer and i i think that's that half-life alex shows that you know story-driven narratives in vr work very 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 well mm-hmm. and I, I applaud them for that for because yeah. it's not i mean there's been a few others that have been doing that very well as well um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's get into the review then. And again, we're not going to be talking about any spoilers, so don't no. worry uh, just yet. We'll give you a good warning. Yeah. But it is interesting that, you know, these people are making this happen. And I'm sure this is going to evolve over time, like people playing the game uh, traditionally and not in VR. But we'll we'll keep uh, talking about it, you know, in, in a future episode if we see any more interesting updates on that. Uh, but let's talk about the reviews, because like we said, it, it's done exceptionally well. Um, pretty much all game reviewing sites have, have have been you know giving it an outstanding review yeah. you know ign gave it like 10 out of 10 uh, it's got exceptional reviews across the board people are really enjoying it and uh, they totally agree with us yeah. in that you know it's a must own vr title i think yeah. uh, and it, it raises the bar in terms of what vr games can achieve yeah. uh, so it's not just a great vr game it's just a great it's a great game, game. it's just a great game general, you're totally right like, you're totally right so yeah, uh, you- so i actually reviewed the game uh, because the thing was i had access up front for two weeks so i finished it a couple of times already i just couldn't tell anyone it was very hard trust me 
Um, but I, I posted a review. I usually don't do that. But, you know, this game is like this, this historical moment of like, we got to just, you know, uh, do it. So this is what I said about this game. Again, no spoilers. It's pretty... Uh, um, you know, uh, casual in terms of what I'm saying. So um, I said that um, Half-Life Alex is the future of gaming. A title that has not only brought us a little closer to the tipping point of virtual reality going mainstream, but also shows that this is the way pancake games are meant to be played. From the visuals to the audio and the story to the gameplay, everything comes together in this innovative title that uses VR to its full potential. It is a top-notch adventure that is jam-packed with many loving and cool moments that are a true throwback. Half-Life Alex is a must-play for every VR enthusiast. And first I also said, and flat gamer, but people were going all over the place. They were harassing me on my Steam profile for saying that. Um, so I just made it, you know, like VR enthusiast because those are the people that respect this title and they want it to. So that's why I changed so you basically, it. You, you triggered the, you triggered Oh, the, I do. The, the I triggered it, dude. I triggered it like instantly because I was one of the first people that posted a review. Um, yeah. yeah, people were so angry for me saying that's that. that. That's hilarious. We've got a great comment by Watto UK in the chat. He said, if only he had a toilet roll for every time that he heard that VR was dying. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you have any spare, Watto, send them my way. You can use some extra TP at this uh, time. If there's um, one thing that Alex, Half-Life Alex has shown is that toilet papers are still abundant in the apartment. In, in, the, in the future. I've, I've found plenty of toilet roll yeah. in Half-Life Alex. Yeah. No need to panic buy. No need to panic buy. <laughs> no need to panic buy. Um, so yeah, great reviews across the board from pretty much everyone. A overwhelmingly positive review on Steam so, uh, so far. Um, so let's talk about performance. Uh, again, we're not getting into any spoilers just yet. Just talking about how the game runs on the systems that we tried it on. Um, I know that, Rowdy, you had some issues with this, right? Running yes. it smoothly. Um, so I'll, I'll give my specs rather, uh, rather rather quickly. So I'm running it on my laptop. So it's not on the desktop that I'm running it. So I'm running it on my laptop with an i7 processor and an RTX 2060. Yep. Uh, it has 32 gigabytes of RAM on an SSD drive. Um, is there anything else? I don't think so. No, that sounds good. That sounds pretty yeah. much like the spec of my yeah. razor blade. And I, I, I didn't have an optimal experience, but I okay. do think it has to do with the hardware combination. I think Valve still needs to iron that out because I found a lot of people who were also playing on the Rift S. I played on the Rift S, not on the Valve Index. Mm -hmm. uh, so through Oculus into Steam. Yeah. Um, and I think that something is not really compatible there that there is something that isn't really properly working because uh i didn't manage to hit the 80 frames per second from the from the headset mm -hmm. uh, and also when i uh, use i what i basically had to do is i had to force uh, uh half of the frame rate so 40 frames per second although it's oh, says okay five yeah. and then i had to force it to uh to use a synchronous reproduction projection in Oculus as well then i had to boot up the performance monitor I turn that back off and then it would run smoothly for about 30 minutes up until I had to reload or we, uh, I died and I had to like reload the previous save. So in terms of optimal performance, I didn't have, I really had stutter. Like when, right. I, when I looked around, it was okay. But as soon as I, as I started moving, then I had like a, a stutter that was appearing. And I, I tested with different titles. I didn't have it there, but I did have it in Half-Life Alex. Interesting. And I did find a lot of reports on Reddit of also people using the Oculus Rift S. Yeah. Um, that had similar kind of issues and other people with a 1080 Ti that didn't have those problems. So I think it's a certain hardware configuration that I specifically have and those people might have as well that I, I mean, it, it, did, it didn't like deteriorate from the experience that I didn't have an enjoyable experience. I'm roughly into deep into chapter five, I think almost ending that one. Um, but it did like, it wasn't an optimal performance that I had specifically. Okay, and I think uh, you know Eric says in the chat that he was trying it on a laptop as well, and it said it, he he said it also runs very badly for him using the Rift S. Mm. So I think you're right; it could be something to do with those mobile chipsets on the on the on the laptop potentially, could maybe, be. Or, or like you said, the fact that you've got to have Oculus open at the same time. Yeah. Um, but what about you then, Nathy? Because I think you had a similar experience to me uh, using the Index, right? That it was pretty good. Yeah. No, uh, I, I played it on the Index. Uh, I also played it on the Quest, you know, with uh, the link cable. Um, I also tried it uh, very shortly on a Windows Mixed Reality headset. Um, mm -hmm. uh, performed fine. So I, f the first playthrough I did was on a, on a 1080. 
1080 yep. Ti was just fine. Uh, it's very well optimized, even from you know the the ultra graphics to low. It's working fine, and it still looks amazing on low. It's funny if you see the difference between low and ultra. It's it's not that bad. So even playing it on the lowest, I, I sometimes I even kept it on low and I forgot about it. I was like, wow, this game is beautiful. And then I'm going back to my center. Oh wait, so I played it on. <laughs> <laughs> so you mean so so that's that's like something that uh, this game does does very well. But yeah, the frame rate was fine. You know, uh, the tracking was uh, okay. Um, yeah. Also with Oculus Link, uh, it was uh, was great. Then I switched over to a 2080, the one that you're using, the same GPU. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it was like it was like the same thing. It worked as good as the 1080, actually. Um, uh, what a surprise, of course. Um, yeah, and, strange uh, that we have such a such a different experience. Uh, so I, I'm wondering, like, what triggered the experience for me to to happen there? Uh, but, I think the fact that it could be just like on a laptop potentially, I don't know, um, and, and the fact that you're using Rift S. Uh, but I tried it with Rift S on my machine, obviously it's a full desktop machine, um, but uh, I didn't have any issues uh, running it on a Rift S, but uh, again with the index, uh, I was running it at 90 hertz on the index, I wasn't running it any no. faster. I had it on high settings in the game, um, and I was obviously streaming it. Um, to YouTube at the same time as well. So I, yeah. I, I did want to have some performance headroom. Um, but yeah, I think the game, in, in terms of its performance, ran so really smooth. I think the engine that, that Valve has made for this game, like the new Source engine, I think it's incredible. And like you say, it's very well optimized for uh, the hardware. And um, everything just looked buttery smooth, in my opinion. And it's funny because when we went originally, like you know, a couple of weeks back, to check out the Steam environments, and we were like, oh, these Steam environments look incredible. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's right. These the game actually looks way better. Yeah, it looks it's, way better. It's amazing. <laughs> it's almost it's almost uh, photorealistic in parts. That's yeah, it kind is. of how it feels. Yeah, it is. You know, with the architecture. So um, I was really pleased with the uh, the performance and and how the game uh, looked. But um, let us know in the chat if you've had some sort of interesting um, yeah. sort of performance uh, issues, or maybe you found it run but I, uh, well. when I when I uh, when I played it on my Quest, you know, with uh, with the Oculus Link cable, uh, mm -hmm. with the fiber cable that I used. Um, it was great. Uh, it performed fine for me. Again, you need a beefy computer to do both of that at the same time. It will be more demanding for sure. But yep. um, it, 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 you know, it looked great. It played great. Um, no latency whatsoever um, because it, it's a big game. You know, there's a lot of input going on. Um, I didn't try it wirelessly. I saw people saying like, yeah, but I want to play with virtual desktop. Well, you know, that's just you getting into uh, your own troubles. If you have a good, you know, connection, then you can pull it off. But if yep. you're trying to stream it with your funky, you know, connection, I don't know if it's gonna work. I still yep. prefer a cable uh, over, you know, uh, doing it wirelessly. I, I, I get the point, you know, of doing it. Um, but yeah, it was nice to play it that way. And and Valve, I heard, has been optimizing uh, it for Oculus Link. And that's something I have never heard before. They didn't have to because they have Steam uh, VR, so they don't have to help out Oculus. They don't have to help out Microsoft or anyone. But they mm. did it. They they you know make it, made it so you know well optimized for every headset. It's yeah, and it's funny because uh, D one three sixty VR in the chat says there's new Nvidia drivers for Half Life Alex. Yeah, um, correctly, yeah. and that ditched uh, his uh, stutter. So maybe that might be a, a, an option for you, Rowdy. Uh, yeah, I, did I, I did. I did update my drivers before I started. But if there's a new one in the past day, I haven't done that yet. It came out the day after it launched. Yeah, no, I, have, I, I have used those. Oh, okay. 100 okay. Certain. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of um, performance and graphics. Uh, let's talk about audio uh, because audio is a big, big factor of this game. And again, we're not getting into any spoilers yet, um, but audio in this game is incredible. And what I really loved was that everything sounded really great, really clear. But then you'd have these moments in combat where the tension would be built by the audio ramping up. You mm -hmm. know, like you'd have this like very hype track well behind yeah. you, you know, that would get yeah. you pumped for taking out like soldiers or a very crabs or intelligent whatever. track, uh, by the way, where yeah. at certain yeah. areas it kind of, you know, you already kind of hear it going on, but it only triggers to the next part of the music where you do something and yes. then it starts to get intense. Yes. And I, I thought that was really incredible and I, I loved it. And, um, you know, you, you have, um, again, I won't spoil anything, but you have like a, a companion talking to you throughout the game and you obviously hear Alex talking as well. Um, and 
to hear that narration between the two was was amazing um and it, it offers something really nice to the game that yeah. not many other vr games do because other vr games in terms of audio they let you be the the narration right they let you be the character and you narrate yeah. the story in your own head mm. but this is kind of giving and I'm, I'm often i'm actually like uh like i like that because it mm. allows you to get immersed more but this is done so well because you 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 build this kind of relationship up that it's 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 remarkable mm. the yeah. only the only thing i've seen that before is that um how is that game called again i think firewatch right um, yeah Firewatch, for one Campo, of, Sempo, Campo yeah, Center. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Mm. Where you have that, indeed, that relationship that is being built by your yeah. character and someone else. Yeah, but they're so. part of the they're part of the Valve team now, so that would totally make sense. Yeah. yeah, but the audio is insane. There are moments where you're in the room and everything makes sense. If you shoot the gun or you walk, you hear like the echo, the reverb. Everything makes sense. It's all spatially, like you know, correct, accurate. Yeah, and, yeah, and, absolutely. And and then you realize that that you know audio is like audio is such a big part of the gameplay too where they lead you towards something because it makes a certain noise or where you know where the enemy is because you can hear it from behind so yeah. the audio here is maybe even more beautiful than the visuals are i'm not i'm not kidding it's it's so so insane what they did with that i have never heard a game you know yeah. be so good before uh, on yeah. a VR headset, especially with, of course, the index with those amazing pair of headphones. It's incredible. And some of the tracks are actually tracks I would just listen to on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah. They're so yeah, the music is, uh, is good. Yeah. So if you can't play it on the index, of course, like I would just highly recommend just using a pair of headphones. Mm. Like if you're using it with the Quest or the Rift S, just get a pair of headphones on because you'll, you'll thank me later. It sounds so much better with a pair of headphones on. Um, so audio is top notch, absolutely. Um, let's get into some gameplay then. Um, like just, we're just talking about like mecha gameplay mechanics um, because we know you know initially it just had snap rotation in terms of locomotion. Um, Wait, uh, Nate, I would also cut the video here for a moment so yeah. people don't see too far. Yeah, that's the... that's where I was. Oh, okay. that's, yeah, that's yeah. where we were going to stop, anyways. Yeah. Um, so in terms of like locomotion methods, um, you know, you have smooth locomotion, you have uh, blink, you have uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, it's like a dash. What shift? You yeah, mean? shift. That's what shift. they call it. They call it different names. Yes, yeah, so you got blink, shift, and smooth locomotion. Uh, blink is like uh, the the whole screen fades to black, then goes back again. Very very comfortable for newcomers. Shift is like a very fast movement forward. Feels like a rush. You know, a bit like the uh, the dash teleport in Doom VFR. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got smooth locomotion, which is smooth locomotion. Um, and in the game, they um, they had snap turn originally, but that was the only turn that you could do. Like even if you turned snap mm. turn off, it wasn't smooth initially. You you could you could, if you turn it off, it's it it still got triggered for some reason. Yeah. Uh, so so the way I play personally is without snap turn, I always physically move because I have a three sixty well. play space. So that yeah. way yeah. I can just do my thing. I never use smooth turn or uh, the snap turn. Only when I record a video, I want to face the camera. So I quickly do it and then I continue to record, but I never snap turn because it makes me motion sick. Snap turning makes me motion sick. I, I can only Interesting. do it the way where I do it physically, where I just physically move around yeah, because yeah. it's weird. Yeah. It's like, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, I, I never use any kind of turning. I always turn just physically. I find it yeah. weird to be moving with my head like that when I can just do it physically. Yeah, but it if you doesn't bother me. Space. It doesn't bother me for some reason. Like I can snap turn and uh, it doesn't affect me in any way, and especially good for speed running. That's <laughs> uh, the game. That is true. Um, but uh, they've patched it since, right? So you can actually yeah. smooth turn now, apparently. Yeah, yeah correct. Um, so that's that's great that you've got the options there to make the game as comfortable as you it's, want it it's to It's nice be. also for when you play seated or you are restricted in some ways, you know, then it's, it's yeah. very handy. And that's something we should mention again, actually. You can play the whole game completely one-handed if, yeah. if, you, if you have to, like you don't have the ability to use a second hand, or you, know, you want to play it seated, you can do that. Um, you, know, you can teleport up and down ladders if you want to, or you can climb them manually. Um, yeah. There's lots of accessibility and lots of options for comfort, which is great. Mm. You know, there's options for everyone, yeah. put it that way. Uh, but what I will say is, without giving any spoilers away, is that it does seem like the game was developed 
with teleportation in mind. And even if you do play smooth locomotion, there will be sections in the game where you will have to teleport. You don't have a choice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. T yeah. Totally. And right. and 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 not only that, it's also the way enemies react to you. Um, yes. Are all based on the the shifting and the uh, you know the teleportation you're using. Some parts of the game, you as you said, you are getting forced to use it. It it just shows in so many ways in terms of combat and in terms of you know walking around that it was built from from the ground up for that. But again, if we look at you know how long this game has been in development four years, maybe five, I don't know how long exactly, but that points towards when they started doing it, teleportation was mainstream. And still yeah. for beginners, because most people will have their first experience with you know VR in Half-Life, it's good that this is default. But I still re like uh, would prefer to do things more physically. I think jumping would become a problem if you had to do that physically, because it's very tricky to jump to certain mm -hmm. parts, but definitely crawling through certain spaces. Some of them can be done by, you know, physically doing it, then others yeah. can't, but make it universal. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't experienced, I haven't found one yet where I can't crawl under. Like I, I, no, I've been it's able not, now, yeah, but up it's, until this point, like to like really like crawl under most of the things that I would normally have to teleport. Well, there are a few mm. points but, where you can't do it. And if you want to uh, jump over something or uh, what do they call it? Mantle. Uh, there are moments where you can't mantle over or through a window. It doesn't work. Yeah. You can't do it. I tried. Trust me, I tried. <laughs> and, and, and also, I would say, you know, if you're using smooth locomotion, which I think personally is the most immersive way to play it, yeah. but you are at a disadvantage at certain points because you can't physically move fast enough. No. And that, because the, are, the, yeah. the smooth is set yeah. at a, a slow pace. That, that's, that, 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 that's the thing that I noticed. I'm not going to tell you where exactly, but it was a moment yeah. where I just died because I had to. It just forced me to use something I didn't wanted to use um, yes. but I think the, the the biggest downside of the locomotion part is the fact that um, when you when you walk over items with the uh, the continuous movement you mm -hmm. constantly go up and down so if there's a little rock on the floor or or a pack of cornflakes it's like you boop, you go up in in the sky and also the staircase it's like and then you go down and yeah for me it's not a problem but there will be people that are like whoa okay take it easy like it's going so i like that <laughs> <laughs> i first was like ah oh, that's cool <laughs> <laughs> that's cool that's a nice yeah. feature yeah. Yeah. yeah um okay so that's like the gameplay um let's start getting into the story now and this is where we're going to get into spoiler territory now we're not going to get into the... moment, there was one thing that i wanted to say still sure, about, the, about the gameplay sure. what, what i really liked was in the beginning almost everything is interactive like you can you can pull the radio out you can touch things you can flex them you can do yeah. almost everything you have a bike that you can throw around even the bikes are like interactive and you can use the the the, the wheels and the paddles uh, but i did notice like further into the levels a lot of that interactivity that like, kind of disappeared not everything mm -hmm. is still as interactive as it is in the beginning yeah, yeah. um so that is something that i would keep in yeah i, I that's yeah. funny that you mentioned that because the first radio you encounter you can you know use the yeah. but then later on you have more radios and you're like oh wait wait, wait so let me do uh, oh, yeah. oh or um <laughs> but it in terms of that like gameplay wise uh, mechanics wise it's like people have been comparing it to boneworks in a way mm -hmm. um yeah. it's it's kind of like boneworks but it's dumbed down in a way where it's still enjoyable yeah. and not frustrating exactly. to play. Yeah, uh, exactly. I think that is. I, I think they 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 did it right. I think it would have become frustrating yeah. if it was as interactive yeah. and as both. The most it's fun and the most important part is that the 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 items you hold or the weapons you hold they 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 stick to your hand. So with Boneworks, if you had a gun, you had to hold you it, it and yeah, you could you drop, drop it. it. Well, here yeah. it's like, if you have a gun, it always yeah. sticks. If you have something else, it always Again, sticks. Again, I didn't like that. Oh, you like, didn't like that? one of the things, because I, 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 if I play Pavlov or if I play Onward, I always grip. I always grip anyway, mm -hmm. because you need to grip there, because I have it set up that way, I can turn it off. But that's the yeah, way that I play my games. But yeah. I didn't have the option here to do like a... No. I, I wanted to like flick my my weapon to my yeah. other hand and try it, but you could, I couldn't. Yeah, do that. but I think this is a good balance of having gameplay mechanics that are still feeling fun, realistic, yeah. are not frustrating, are fun, and are still feeling like you're free to interact with whatever you want. So I think this is a good start, a good baseline of where we want to be now in terms of interactivity. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. My headset. Okay, wait, wait. No, I'm, not, I'm not going into spoilers just yet. So oh, the, come the, on. These are, these, these are minor, minor spoilers. So minor spoiler warning. Because, but this is all information minor. that has already been shown in trailers and in the synopsis of the game. Um, so these are minor spoilers. We'll go into major spoilers later. So um, you can still stick around if you know the basic premise of Half Life. Because let's just cover the story where it sits in the universe and everything else. So basically, Half-Life Alex uh, sits between Half-Life 1 and Half-Life 2. You play uh, the role of Alex Vance, who is like a substantial character in Half-Life 2. She's also in Half-Life 2 Episode 1 and 2 as well. Um, uh, Her dad is Eli Vance. He is part of like the Resistance with you, and you're on a reconnaissance mission to gather intel on the Combine, who are like the the alien enemy. and yeah. you're sort of trying to sort of fight against them. That's okay. basically yeah. the, the summary of the plot. Can right? I just yeah. say, uh, can Mike, I... wait, uh, people are pissed at you, Mike. Apparently, <laughs> Eric didn't know that there are other Half-Life games. <laughs> yeah. Can I can I just Sorry. can I just say how badass Alex is? You're 19 and you're part of the Resistance, and you're yeah. willing to you know put your life on the line. I, just I, I think she's brave to just go into City 17 if she's 19 <laughs> or 45. Like you wouldn't see me in there. Like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, so what, at this point, I would say uh, we're going to s- start talking about some major spoilers now. So what I'm going to do is um, Rowdy can take his headphones off. I'll put my thumbs up when we're done with the spoilers. So if you want to mute yeah. the stream, uh, I'll put my thumbs up when the spoilers and, and are done. I'll, I'll keep my headset off. Yes. So, so if Rowdy's got his fun. headphones on, uh, <laughs> then you know that we're back on again. Okay. Well, okay. So j- Just wave. Okay. Yeah, so I'll give, you the, I'll give you the thumbs up Bye. when we're done. Bye, Rowdy. Spoilers. See ya. Bye. So Bye. Mute the stream. Okay. <laughs> so, so we know that Alex is on this mission. Obviously, you know, um, Eli, her father, gets kidnapped by the Combine very early on in the game. Yeah. And you then have to meet up with Russell, yeah. who is um, Eli's, like, best friend. And, yeah. and also, was weren't they colleagues? Possibly colleagues in the past, yeah. Uh, and and Russell basically serves as your narrator throughout the game. He guides you. Yeah. He even gives you the the gravity gloves, which he calls Russells, which I think is hilarious yeah, yeah, yeah. because he invented them. And you can um, even see if you're in his lab what Russells means because he has like yes. on his whiteboard what it means. But the last word is missing. I don't, still don't know what it means. At first, yeah. he wants to call them gravity gloves. Gravity gloves, uh, yeah. But yeah. it's cool that, you know, they uh, instantly uh, show you that he's going to be your sidekick because you can see on the monitors that he's watching you. So you can yeah. see your own VR view on the TV screen, so you know he's always with you uh, exactly. on the way. And that's what he says, literally. And, and the great thing about Russell is, like, he is an amazing character anyway, but he serves as some, like, comic relief throughout the whole game. So you could be experiencing something really, really scary, and he would be talking about something ridiculous and really funny. Yeah. Like, um, so there's a really funny bit where you're stuck in the dark. You've only got a torch to light your way. There's these like horrible, huge hedge crabs like jumping at you. It's terrifying. And then Russell's talking about like a bacon and lettuce and tomato sandwich yeah. and how that was like a real big deal back yeah. in the and, day before like the apocalypse. He always tunes in at the right moment. There is, yes. I have never had a moment where I was like, you just got to shut up because I'm trying to do stuff. He's also never trying to tell you, oh, you need to do this. And this is, so he's never, you know, trying to, to guide you in a way where you can't figure it out yourself. He's also the tutorial in the game. If you just look yeah. at the way, you know, he tunes in. So he's constantly like, hey, you can do this and it explains some stuff. So the tutorial is very nicely built into the game without it feeling like a tutorial. You play the tutorial and you don't even know when the tutorial ends because there's always something new to learn. Yeah. So that is um, Russell. Like he, yeah, he's uh, an amazing character throughout the game. He's a little weird sometimes, but I, I yeah. do like him. He, 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 can, he can come back. He can come back if he wants. Yeah. So obviously you progress through the game, you know, you uh, you meet the Vortigon, which is from the original Half-Life games, you know, the yeah. alien race. The uh, Alex Vance. <laughs> yeah. And they, they help you out on your quest because obviously they, they know Eli uh, yeah. from previous yeah. uh, games. Um, and then you, you progress through to um, basically after Eli gets captured, you have to intercept a train which yeah. is on. You have to uh, save him. To, yeah. to save him. Yeah. Uh, once you've done that, then you, you, you're kind of tasked with with um, making your way towards a vault, right? Yeah, well, that's and, the funny and, part. Like, the goal in the game is to save your dad. So when you finally save him, then... Yeah, like you're you, done. That's done. So then you pretty much play a total different game 
about something totally different. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and this is the thing that they, they they refer to the vault, which is this like huge structure in the sky. Yeah, it's not the citadel. It's like an, another yeah, structure. A super weapon. Yeah. yeah. Super. They call it a super weapon. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay. So I have to destroy the super weapon yeah, sure. now. No, no big deal. No big deal. No big deal. So you <laughs> well. keep progressing through, um, and then you, it transpires that this isn't a super weapon at all. It's a prison, right? It's a prison. Yeah. It's a prison. And you're like, well, if, if there's like a super weapon in this prison and I need to get something out, like, what is it? And and that, that's when I started thinking, like, this is going to be Gordon Freeman. Like, we're going to see Gordon Freeman now. Mm-hmm. And then um, and then this is obviously like huge, huge major spoilers. So if you're still listening at this point and you haven't played it yourself, just turn off. Uh, turn off right now. And I'll give you the thumbs up in the chat and everything else once we've finished talking about it. But basically, you get to a point in the game where you overhear a, a voice message uh, between a woman, right? She's yeah, talking she's, on the phone. Uh, I think she's called Claire, Claire. I need to look that up for a second. Yeah. But she's a familiar character from the Half-Life universe. Right. And she's saying, basically, that you know the guy that we're protecting in this prison, like he's broken out a Black Mesa before with a crowbar. He is like the deadliest person that is going to stop the, like us from progressing forward with our goals. And at that point, you learn that your mission at this point is to break Gordon Freeman out of this prison and it was at this point in the game like bearing in mind I was live streaming the whole game from start to finish that I'd never played before Uh, I think at this point I was like six hours into the stream and I was tired like I was flagging a little bit but this was the bit of information that just boosted my morale completely and I was like at this point I need to continue and find out actually what happens at the end Um, so I I pushed through and so the the name is Dr. Judith Mossman she's the one that is talking at that moment but again so you first save your dad then you find a super weapon you want to destroy it but then suddenly it takes another twist where it's like wait maybe we should not destroy it but take it down at least and then sneak inside of this thing yeah Uh, then suddenly it's like wait it's not only like you know, taking it down, Gordon Freeman seems to be on board. So yeah. that's like the next goal you're yeah. you're getting. So you're constantly getting uh, uh, swooped around at the right moment, by the way. Not too early, yeah. not too late. It's like every time you're like, oh, when are we going to finally take down the super... Oh, wait, there's more. Gordon Freeman yeah. is on board. And then suddenly your whole mind reboots and it's like, let's play some more. Let's go, let's go. I can't stop <laughs> now. I can't save it, you know. Uh, yeah, and one thing we should talk about before we get onto <laughs> Gordon um, and the ending is that Jeff, because you meet a, a character called Jeff. Oh, Jeff, yeah. Um, he's like this uh, zombie that he doesn't, he can't see anything, but he can only hear things. Yeah, uh, kind of reminds me of like um, the, the Last of Us, the Demo Gorgon, the Clickers, and, and like a the Demo Gorgon. Yeah, um, but he <laughs> serves as a really interesting section of the game because it's unlike any other part of the game. True. Um, you have to throw these bottles to kind of distract them. It's classic. Um, like every game has like certain sections and this is like the stealth section of Half-Life Alex. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then, then obviously you, you know, you, you get past Jeff, you, you deal with him whichever way you want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then yeah. let, let's just like talk about the end. Um, the, the end, end the end, end or the end. Let's talk about both. Okay. Let's so, talk about the end first. Yeah. So you get to the vault. Yeah, inside. Um, also, we should say that there's an achievement, which I did yesterday, <laughs> where you can carry a garden gnome called Chomsky from the very beginning of the game to the end of the game. To the vault. To the vault, and yeah. you get an achievement for it. Yeah. It's called a uh, gnome vault of my own. And you could, you have to actually carry him in your hand. You can't have him in your inventory or your, yeah. your backpack or anything. So that's another little tip if you want to play it. Uh, but you get to the vault. You fight your way through. You have these kind of like uh, force powers almost. Yeah, you get like, upgraded yeah. at this point. The, what the Vardigons also have, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, at this point, you you think you're going to break open uh, the final sort of prison cell to meet Gordon Freeman. Mm-hmm. And um, it's the G-Men. Of the course, is but there. we knew he was going to pop up because if you watch the trailer, he that he was going to be in there. Yeah, he was going to be in there at some point. Um, so the G-Man basically says to you, um, because we know we know already from the previous Half-Life games, in Half-Life uh, 2, Episode 2, Eli, your dad, does actually get killed, right? It's part of the game in, in Half-Life 2, Episode 2. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and what the G-Man is offering you is saying he, he admires your exception, exceptional, uh, except, exceptional skills <laughs> yeah, yeah. and says... Um, you, your dad, we can bring him back to life. Yeah. We can change the future. Yeah. You want to alter the future. You want to alter the but future. It's Save gonna, him. it's gonna take a high price. It's gonna take a high price, and you have to join us. Join us, yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, so basically the, the iconic suitcase gets overhanded to you, 
You get mm. to feel it with your own fingers, the G-Man suitcase. Yeah. And that's but, the thing. You don't really have a choice, do you? No, you no. That, that's what, it's funny. You get an achievement then saying like, hey, make a choice. So you're like, wait, so could I make a choice? So you're like, hmm, wait, did I really? But there's only one way out of yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. There's only one choice. Join. And that is to agree. You join uh, the G-Man. The future events of your father, Eli, being killed is reversed and he survives and then the game ends and the credits roll and you're like oh yeah. okay well that's that was it. the ending pretty good <laughs> but that's not the ending ending no. then it's like they show pretty much what's going to be the next game and i should say actually before the credits roll you do get a glimpse of gordon in yes, the in, in, yeah. in the in the suit uh, but it's very it's, it's like not satisfying opaque. enough to say like hey i made it all the way to mr g man no. and now he's no. gonna just show me this and that's it yeah, I, I was like, there better be more. Yeah. But thankfully, people have told me there's like an after credits um, scene. So after the credits roll, uh, you then uh, are in the role of Gordon Freeman. You yeah. hear the suit power up, which is amazing. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, the, the sound yeah, yeah. of the suit powering up is incredible. And then you look yeah. at your hands and you're like, wait, so these are the gloves from, yeah. you know? And, and you're in the warehouse where Eli was hangar, killed. Yeah, yeah. And, and, it's, and, and, and the events have changed. So now Eli is back to life again. Um, and Dog is there, which is obviously a huge metal robot from Half-Life 2. Um, and him and Dog are there, and uh, he says uh, the, the events have changed or whatever. He passes you the iconic crowbar and says, Gordon, we've got more work to do. Uh, and then, words to that effect. And then, like, again, we talk about the audio. You grab it with one hand, you hear this, like, I don't know what noise it is, and then with the other hand, and then... That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And then you're like in the mail, you're like, holy shit. Yeah, this is exactly. epic AF. Yeah, it is totally amazing. It's, it's totally amazing. Um, so it's clear that, you know, the next the next game, um, which I, I also would imagine will be in VR, uh, you'll be playing the role of Gordon. And it almost will be a role reversal of this game in that you're Gordon trying to rescue Alex from the G-Man, whereas obviously in Alex you were trying to rescue gordon from this prison yeah yeah um so that's kind of like how it ends it's a, it's a huge payoff and i was really happy with the ending i thought it was one yeah. of the best endings yeah they, they couldn't have ended it any other any better really no, I don't with, think. with that ending they uh definitely you know gave you the right sense of uh you yeah know. so uh that's pretty much it the story in a nutshell uh, and the ending Ooh, and i thought it was a fantastic one like they the story how they have written it is is amazing how they you know all you know uh, like they, they must have had this ginormous web of you know notes at Valve's office to kind of figure out like how are we gonna uh, do do things you know from like how is the player gonna react to this and they must be expecting this to happen but then we're gonna change it up again this really felt like a, a triple A story the way they wrote it the way they timed everything where you know for example and this is a, this is something we have been talking about a lot is like the hotel chapter it's one of the most annoying ones because it takes so long before you can get out of it again there's so many spiders there's so many zombies uh, so many head crabs so many you know barnacles it's crazy <laughs> but then but then um, you know you're kind of at this point where it's like I'm just kind of done with this now. Where it's almost like that point where it's like, I just want to take off the headset, save this game, maybe I should play another time, you know? But then you you finally come to this point where you get a total new weapon. And it's been yeah. ages. It's been ages yeah. before you got a new weapon, you know? The last weapon you got was the shotgun in the freaking sewers. That's like yeah. three, four hours later. And then you get yeah. this gun and you get to just, you know, destroy everything that you hated those two, yeah. three hours you were in the hotel. And yeah. that's that's like you could say like oh that's just coincidence no that's like they have been thinking about that yeah and course, you suddenly also course. feel way more powerful where you were like scared the whole time and you're like you know what spiders I now have a combine gun and I'm gonna shoot you all and you feel like I don't know about you but I felt way safer but yeah, you, you get do. it yeah, you do. but you get it at yeah. the right moment you don't get it too early where it's like oh yeah I finally got a new gun and let's just go to the next one now it's like timed at the right moment where you're almost like like physically drained to get to that point but then you get it. And that's yeah. one of the examples of how good the writing is. I think the writing is 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 just the, so yeah. It's it's pure art. Yeah. So so I think that we're out of spoiler territory. So let's uh, let's invite um, Rowdy and everyone in the chat back. 
Um, I'll give them the thumbs up to let them know we've, we've done talking about uh, spoilers now. Yeah. Um, so we won't be talking any more about spoilers or yeah. the end of the game or anything else that would spoil it. Yeah. Um, but I have to say, though, the crazy thing is that at the end, Alex is actually a guy. That really like blew my mind. <laughs> yeah, shut up, Rowdy. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, but yeah, spoilers are off now. Yeah. We've talked. We've we've got it out of our system. If you've completed the game, you know maybe uh, once you've completed it this week, go back listen to what we thought about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you'll be very happy with it. But isn't uh, it cool to finally have not only a VR game that is one of the best ones we have ever played, but also have a female female protagonist that is actually yeah. kicking ass like like I've never seen before. It's yep. it's amazing uh, to be you know playing as Alex. Uh, even that, of course, you would love to play as other characters from the Half Life universe too. Um, I still think that Alex is yeah. It's it's nice to uh, that you got to know her better uh, in yep. in this in this game. Um, yeah. And 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 something I should mention is that you know for you playing this game was a total different experience because you know I'm from '94. I didn't grow up with Half Life, so mm. for me it's like okay, this is a big deal for the VR industry. I like AAA games, you know, a lot. And then I finally get to play a game where I get the feeling that I'm playing like what I like so much about Bioshock, what I like so much about, you know, playing, uh, let's say the single player of, of a battlefield or, you mm. know, and, and that's that's what finally gets into the VR scene where we have been playing so many games that were on such a low budget that this just, you know, goes through the roof in terms of expectations. And I think the expectations we had were actually even lower than what the game like delivered. The game yeah. over delivered things that are, you know, still, I'm still discovering things like where you have newspapers laying around and every time you progress through the game, the newspaper tells you a different story, tells mm. you what's up with the news at that moment. And then, mm. you know, someone worked on that. Someone came up with the idea, okay, what do, are we going to put on it? Where are we going to put it? Is this a good moment to do it? It's all so well thought through. They really take mm. care of you as the player. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And the thing is, you know, now that Valve has set the bar, you know, it's going to be great to see what happens next from them. You know, I would love to see uh, a Left 4 Dead with this level of polish in, in this kind of like yeah. world that they've created. Mul multiplayer, definitely. Like, yeah. I want to see multiplayer with Valve uh, yeah. for sure. Uh, that's something I just want them to, to nail. It would be magic. Away. It would be magic. Like, when I was playing through the game, I was just imagining what this would be like with three other players in this environment fighting zombies, you know, in Left 4 Dead. It would be incredible. Yeah. Um, wow. So, so, yeah, like, whatever Valve comes next is going to be big uh, and it's going to be with, well, in, in this level of polish. Something that we should un underestimate that is going to happen next, I think earlier than a new game will launch, is that they will make the Source uh, engine open for everyone so people will be able to make their own games. And yeah. if you already had this much fun with all the visuals and audio and stuff that has already been pre-built by them now, uh, yeah. people can just make amazing looking games. Uh, maybe little half-life side stories or something as you said is going to be a little bit of left for that I'm sure people are already brainstorming about it and we're gonna see some interesting stuff yeah Community absolutely maps are going to be yeah because really have nice in this specific title I think uh, in this specific uh, engine and 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 yeah. uh, like if, if I heard the stories about source um, it's you know, you, of course, beginners will be having a hard time with it, but it's pretty, you know, easy to get into it and start building your own, you know, game yeah. because everything has been already made. Um, so and that's it's made with VR in mind, you know. That's, yeah. I think that is one of the strong points for it. Yeah. So this will to be the first time you can actually do it in a yeah. proper way. So you're looking forward to uh, Gary's Mod VR? <laughs> Gary's Mod. And then, yeah, of course, and then become the toilet paper and run around yeah. and hide. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Okay, okay. So that's uh, that's uh, our, our show for today. Uh, let me sort of do a quick recap. Um, if you've got any questions or anything you want to add in the chat, now's a good time to do it while I do a quick recap. Um, so just a reminder, this is a weekly VR, AR, and MR talk show, live streamed every Saturday on YouTube and on Twitch. You can also catch the show in VR, watch it in VR with other people in, in this beautiful environment uh, that has been created by Big Screen TV. So go and check it out. Uh, it goes live at the normal times, which is 7 p.m. in Europe, 6 p.m. in the UK, and 12 midday in Central Europe.
AWS. Also check out the audio version, which you can listen to on your commute or while you're doing the chores around the house. Uh, Rowdy does an amazing job at making sure it sounds beautiful for your ears. So go and check that out if uh, if you if you want to listen to the audio version and make sure you leave us a nice review on iTunes. That would really help us out. Slam a like on this video um, and uh, shows us that you care and you still uh, enjoy the show, even though that YouTube aren't recommending yeah. these streams. Uh, you probably noticed that I, I saw a few comments in the chat about that. That you know, ever since um, the pandemic, of course, the uh, people have been working remotely at YouTube. So there's a lot of problems with the platform at the moment, particularly that, around live streams. Does that, does that mean that there's actually someone physically sitting somewhere pushing our stream out to like our subscribers? I have no that, idea. How does that work? I have no idea, <laughs> but we just know that it hasn't been working. Um, so it hasn't been showing up in notifications. If you search for F Reality, it doesn't come up at no. the top of the list for no. some reason. Same with live streams on my channel. So uh, yeah. I won't be doing any more now that Half Life is over. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's one of those things. Um, also, something to be aware of, we're not 100% sure yet. We might take a, a little break during this time um, uh, because, you know, like everything big has happened already with the world going on as well. Like we've got family and friends we need to look after as well. So um, we don't know 100% if that's going to happen or not yet. We're going to talk about it this week. We'll let you know on social media if that's the case. So keep an yeah. eye on our Twitter accounts. Yeah. Uh, we'll put the update there. So uh, if you want to know what's going on, or if you wonder why we don't stream next yeah. week, check Twitter uh, and we'll probably have an update there for you. So, um, but. But of course, we still want to be here. We, we, you know, we're not going away forever. If we do go away, it'll just yeah. be a case of we're just having a break. We'll come back, uh, and we'll be uh, better and stronger than ever. Yeah. So, so, so to uh, to come, uh, you know, to to show you something very very funny. So while I was, you know, you know, looking for certain characters of the Half Life universe, I found this. Okay, this just heads up. This is fake. Okay, this is fake. But let's look at it because it's quite funny. I was like, first I thought this was real, but it's not. Okay, here okay. we go. So let me show you. Um, here we go. It's a very small picture. <laughs> just look at this. I just have to show this. I'm sorry. I'm a silly man, but I got to show you this. If, you, if you're if you listening, so basically someone made a picture of actors that look like the Half-Life characters and just imagines that they do the voice acting, maybe also the mo-capping, but the, the, the persons that they found for those, you know, characters are pretty spot on. So we have, <laughs> we have Gordon Freeman uh, as, uh, what is it? Hugh uh, Laurie. Laurie, and he's from yeah. uh, the Doctor. House. Yeah, House. He's yeah. House, and then we yeah. have Alex Vance as Rosario da Dawson, also pretty spot on. And then last but not least, Christopher Walken as the Chief Man. <laughs> and that's that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's quite nice. Yeah, that's crazy, yeah. right? So yeah, that that's something I wanted to show. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Um, Awesome. Awesome. So one final thing, um, you know, before we go, just, you know, stay safe, everyone, you know, uh, with everything that's going on in the world right now, you know, make sure you're looking after your friends and family. Yeah. Make sure you're staying inside, self-isolating if you're feeling any symptoms. Make sure you wash your hands regularly. Um, you know, I can't emphasize enough that, you know, this thing is serious. I know we probably downplayed it a little bit in the early days, uh, which was which was wrong. We shouldn't have done that. It is very, very serious now. Um, so we just want to you know, you to take care of yourself and, and we're going to be doing the same as well. So we'll see you on the other side if we do take a break, but um, we hope you enjoy your week in VR. Enjoy some of the new releases that Rowdy uh, talked about this week and, uh, you know, we'll see you soon, no doubt. So until then, bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye. Bye.